Tell me when we're recording. Go. Okay, great. Welcome everybody. It's 608. My name is Tammy Meltzer. I'm chair of Manhattan Community Board 1. This is our full board meeting um, for November. And today's November 22nd. We'll start the meeting as we always do with our public session. Um, we recognize people to speak. We have a timer running. We ask um, that you follow the timer. We will give you a little heads up as you're getting close if you're continuing on. And then proceed from there. After public session comes our public hearing. The topic is Governor's Island and the Climate Center, um, which we just had a presentation of this month. And then we go with our full board meeting and rock and roll. For members of the public who are joining us this evening, the only opportunity you have to speak is either during the public session or during the public hearing. Once we start the business of the board, uh, the meeting is closed for board members and the electeds. And with that, let's look in. I'm going to go in the following order. I'm going to do Andrew Matoska, Maddie Roomley, and then David Warren. I ask if your name has been called, would you please raise your hand so we can find you more expediently? And Lucian, you got found them? Starting with Andrew. I don't see an Andrew. What's the second name? I'm sorry. Matsoka, M A T S U O K A. I think we'll have to circle back for those two. Who's the next person? No problem. I see Maddie Rumley, R U M E L Y. I see David Warren. David is there. Oh, we have David Warren. So let's go with David Warren. Thank you so much. David Warren, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, now finally unmuted. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your efforts. I, I'm speaking in um, favor of what the um, Community Board One Transportation Committee um did regarding the vote on the uh protected bike lanes heading from um the brooklyn bridge to the greenway and i would like to urge everyone to support that because there is such few in i'm a commuter i commute every day from midtown west to the brooklyn bridge and home and it's 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 very unsafe and we're not protected as cyclists and we need this for people i see in the, when i ride i pass schools and I pass elderly people and they really need, need some form of protection and this also helps pedestrians um, w w it, the bike lanes because it slows down traffic and keeps people more aware of when they're driving of the pedestrian and children it's much safer if, the idea would be if um, a if a middle-aged mother wants to ride her child to work or ride with her child, that would be the ideal for us. So, uh, once again, I urge you to support unanimously what came out of the Transportation Committee earlier this month. And thank you again for your time and effort. Thank you very much for coming, David. We really appreciate it. Next, we're going to have Andrew Rosenthal. If we see Andrew. I don't see Andrew yet. I will, I'll look, but uh, Andrew Matsuoka is here. Okay, get the floor is for him then. Andrew, you're in it. you're able to unmute now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome to Community Board One. Awesome. So I don't live in Community Board One. I live just across the bridge um, in Brooklyn, but I um, I do commute through there um, on a bike across both Manhattan and the Brooklyn Bridge. And there's no good way to get across lower Manhattan, uh, particularly I, I work in Chelsea. So I'm on my way. I would love to be able to get to the west side um, safely. Uh, the, the current situation on Reed is no good. A lot of people take chambers, um, which I think, you know, w works well for me, but is, you know, often blocked or not really kind of the safest way. Another friend, she lives in my building and also commutes to the same. We work at the same place. And she describes it's all protected all the way 
to the office except for five blocks of terror across that little section there. And so I, I really urge you to support the resolution that came through um, the uh, Transportation Committee um, to have, I believe it's DOT to uh, study protected lanes from the Brooklyn Bridge out over to the west side. Um, it would be great if they're able to figure out a solution that works well for the area and works well for all of us that are sort of, um, you know, tr just trying to get to work or get to the doctor's office or go about our lives uh, safely. It's also um, my understanding is I believe it would bring um, uh, benefits to the community as well. You, um, when pr the protected lanes go in, you see uh, a decrease in uh, traffic injuries and uh, fatalities. And so like it brings benefits to those that are commuting through the area, but also um, those that live there or work in the area. And so I urge um, uh, folks to support the resolution that's here tonight. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us. No problem. We're gonna move to Nate Fillmore. Let's find Nate. I don't see Nate. That's okay. No problem. Moving along for safe. Catherine Willis. I'm not seeing Catherine Willis. If you hear your name, please raise your hand. It helps us find you way faster. There is a Catherine on. There's a Catherine with a K. Her hand is up. Got her. Sarah, look. Welcome, Catherine. Your mic is unmuted. I am in my sign in, but thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I also want to support the Transportation and Street Activity Permits Committee resolution, unanimous resolution um, for the safe bike routes connecting the Brooklyn Bridge and Hudson River Greenway. Um, you know, I. Uh, bike and walk through the area along with friends. And as you've heard already, um, the current bike lanes are not safe. Um, in fact, looking back, there have been over 300 crashes along Reed, Warren and Chamber streets in just the past seven years, um, resulting in um, at least one bike rider's death. Um, as well as 182 folks who were injured inside of cars, 104 pedestrians who have been injured and 78 people injured while biking. So, you know, like David was saying, um, many people, including parents um, and children being taken to school, people who are getting to work or who are working cyclists, tourists, like all kinds of people um, are, are biking on chambers and in the area, despite the lack of protected lanes and everyone deserves safety um, in getting around. So thank you again for the opportunity and I ask the full board to support this resolution. Fantastic, thank you so much. Uh, Barack Friedman has asked to speak. If you, Barack, if you raise your hand, we will unmute you. Barack, welcome to Community Board One. For, hey, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Fabulous. Uh, yeah, thanks to CB1 for the opportunity to speak. And I just also want to speak in favor of the CB1 Transportation Committee uh, plan for the protected bike lane. And just to say, I just wanted to echo how important it is because the West Side Greenway is the most heavily um, used bike lane in North America. And the new Brooklyn Bridge bike lane also takes in thousands and thousands of people biking over there. And so having a connection between the two is really important. And right now with the um, painted bike lanes, they're always blocked. So it's pretty dangerous um, and having to uh, circumnavigate uh, in and out of the bike lane um, makes it kind of chaotic and dangerous. So I'll try to keep it short and yield my time and just Thank you to the CB1 Transportation Committee, and uh, I strongly support their resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Barack, for joining us. We're going to go Cecil Sheeb, I believe you pronounce it, and then Kathy Park Price and Alan Moyman. And I apologize if I haven't gotten any of those names right, but I promise I'll, I'll get there. Cecil. Um, I've I'm, I'm unmuting Cecil Tammy. I just want to let you know that Andrew Rosenthal is now present. 
Thank you. I'll get back to Andrew then. Uh, Cecil, welcome to Community Board One. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I don't have the pleasure of living in the district, but I do live in the neighboring district on the Lower East Side. So I'm a frequent biker to the area for work. Um, I try all the routes and try to find the one that's the safest. And I try to remind myself and others that every person that feels um, safe to bike because they get a safe route means just a little, uh, just a little less traffic. And there are a lot of people who are willing to bike when they have safe routes and that gets them out of cars and actually makes it easier for the people who do need to drive or who can't bike. So I look at this as helping everyone. I have a, um, a five-year-old. We go to events and cultural things um, in the area. For example, at uh, 120 uh, Warren Street, the, you know, the community school down there, that's where Mozart from Munchkins does its thing. And um, an earlier speaker said something about five, uh, five blocks of terror. That's exactly right. I've got my five-year-old on the back of the bike. I'm going from protected bike lane down Allen Street to another protected bike lane. And then you just hit a couple spots in the network where you are just supposed to mix it up and merge in and out of traffic and go around cars stopped in the painted uh, bike lane. Um, and it's terrifying and it's scary. And, and there's something that, that, that we can, uh, do about it. And so I'm very grateful to the board for uh, considering this resolution. And I hope you will support uh, the resolution for the protected bike lanes um, in the proposal. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Cecil. Andrew, I will go to you next. Rosenthal, because I had called you earlier. You... Go ahead. We're getting in, uh, given that this is a different platform than I'm used to. That's OK. You're here. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I trend, I actually started my career at 55 water. So I know your district very well, and I'm there regularly. My kids live in Brooklyn. I'm an upper West sider, but I cut through. And I also am always trying to find a route from the West side greenway, which I used to go down town to get across to the bridges and have never really found something that I find perfect. So, uh, I'm going to keep this short. I encourage you all to vote for a safe, protected bike lane. I know that there's a lot of people out there that uh, aren't happy with the way that some bikers uh, behave. This bike lane is going to help people and people that are not crazy. You know, we need to do things to make biking safer for everybody, and this will do it. Uh, we can also try and address uh, bikers who don't obey the law, but this bike lane is not going to do anything for or against those people. It's just going to help the people that do obey the law. So um, I'll yield back my extra time and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just let you know, I spend a lot of time down at City Hall trying to shut down the downtown Manhattan heliport. So we're, <laughs> uh, I'm one of the officers of Stop the Chop NYNJ. And so I'm working for your district because I know you guys are battered more than anybody else really anywhere in the planet. I got a funny update for you on that one. Well, thank you very, uh, thank you very much, Andrew, for your time and for consideration and the support in Community Board One, Alan. And I please tell me I apologize if I haven't gotten this right. Muy man, Muy man, you got it. Close enough. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, uh, I am also here to support the protected bike lanes from the Hudson River Greenway to the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, I work in the financial district, uh, actually right next to one of the heli heliports on um, 32 at uh, 32 Old Slip, right by Pier 11 as well. Um, I come into the office four to five days a week via bike from the East Village uh, whenever the weather is nice out. Um, I'm still here today, despite it not being nice, but the bike ride is, is much more pleasant. Uh, it's thanks to these bike lanes that I'm actually here so often uh, supporting businesses around here at lunchtime and after work. Um, if you've walked around, you might notice the city bike docks are now denser with more bikes in them, uh, and yet they're still full, which signals you know, strong demand for cycling in the area. Um, my girlfriend uh, anecdotally lives in Brooklyn, so I regularly head to her after work, but you know, navigating through the financial district to the bridge is always a bit of a challenge. Uh, she's actually lived in Copenhagen in the past, and she's one of those people that won't bike in New York until the bi protected bike lane network gets even you know, better, um, um, and she feels more confident. Uh, biking in the city, and I think that we can get there and, you know, have a, a healthier populace that's uh, biking more regularly and just be more climate conscious. So I urge you all to uh, support the resolution here tonight. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for joining us. Kathy Park Price is next. Kathy. Welcome, Kathy. Your mic is open. Oh, and now it's closed. Let's try that again. Hello. Hi, welcome. Oh, okay. You can hear me now. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, my name is Kathy, and I too joined the chorus of those in favor of the protected bike lane connecting the Brooklyn Bridge to the Hudson River Greenway. Um, I think I may be the tenth speaker at this point um, in favor of this project, and I hope the board will support the resolution which your transportation committee voted. Unanimous, unanimously in favor of just a few weeks ago. Um, um, at that meeting, a group of neighbors presented about this connection and why it's so critical. And they did so in a very effective and thorough manner, um, full of details and reasons um, why the safety would be improved and why this critical connection needs to happen um soon before anyone um is hurt along that route so i work in cb1 and use the route often i'm really excited about the prospect of being able to bike more safely to and from from work along this path so thank you so much um to you all thank you for coming so let's take a look and see who else from our public uh area has we have Paul Crickler, Andrea Peterson, and then Nate Fillmore, if he's on, and then Jonathan Johnson. Paul, I'm going to send you a request to unmute. There you go. Welcome to Manhattan Community Board 1. Thank you very much. I'm here to support and join the chorus, the growing chorus of people supporting this bike lane. To me, it's, it's very obvious. We need to do all we can to get the place to be safer, the people, people like my kids, my teenage kids, who I would not dream of letting cycle from the Brooklyn Bridge to the west side, again, the most um, heavily bicycle ridden uh, place in the whole of North America. And it's, it's, it's ludicrous we haven't got a safe way to do that. And if we can't get people young uh, and people old and everybody in between a uh, safe place to ride the bike, we're not doing the job properly. So I'm very grateful and very thankful to the Transportation Committee for having a unanimous vote in support. I endorse that for the one last thing to mention, a tiny mention, a tiny, I've been to two or three, maybe four different community boards. Yours is by far the nicest welcome I've ever had. I've seen you do the same welcome to everybody else. So thank you so much for being like this. I wish they were always friendly. Thank you. Well, my pleasure and thank you for joining us. I, you know, what we do is about the public, public engagement. We don't always agree, but we certainly try and to the best that we can uh, have people heard. Alrighty, so Andrea Peterson is the next. I don't see her name. I'm trying to see if it was spelled as something else. She's here. Okay, great. Hands up. There we go. Welcome, Andrea. You're next. Andrea, you're you should be able to unmute now. There you go. Welcome, Andrea. My You're name's Andrea muted. Peterson, and I echo all the comments that have been uh, previous to mine. Um, for over 40 years, I've been riding a bike from my home at, on Lafayette Street to Tribeca. As an arts administrator at a number of Tribeca organizations, as a parent taking my children to and from school, and as an art teacher at PS 150 for over 20 years. The riding in the neighborhood has become unbearable. Crossing West Street, where there are numerous schools from of all ages, has become a nightmare. Currently, all the options are unsafe. All it would take to remedy the situation would be for CB1 to have the courage and forward thinking to okay the plan to install a simple protected bike lane on Chamber Street. And I hope you can all support this idea to have a safe and welcoming environment to Tribeca residents, visitors, and businesses alike. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, all righty, let's go back to where we are. I think that is it on that. I think the next person who would like to speak is Jonathan Johnson, because I don't see Nate Fillmore anywhere, so. 
but noted Nate was speaking, by the way, in support for the protected bike lanes. Jonathan? Let's see if I can find you. Uh, Jonathan, you should be able to unmute yourself. There you go. Welcome, Jonathan. Hi. Hello, community board. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I really appreciate everything that you do. Um, my question is the land lease that's going to be going on 43 years come January. Um, or 46 years come January. What can the board and what can we do with that um, that piece of legislation that's sitting um, on the governor's desk? Because as a real estate broker down here full time for almost five years, I'm really starting to hear it, and I'm really and the homeowners that want to sell are really starting to feel it. So, what can we do? What can the community board do? I think what you're referring to, Jonathan, is the Battery Park City Authorities, um, the land lease that stems from there, because not everyone obviously on the meeting necessarily knows that the land lease expires in seven years, you're saying? 69. No. 2069. No, it's, it, in 2069. Yeah, 2069. 2069. Right. Okay. So, yeah, so it's 46 years from January. So okay, that, and your question and comment is looking to get that further extended beyond those dates. Right, there's a piece of legislation on the governor's desk to extend it 50 years. Um, Which we have supported and we have we have done a resolution, I believe. So it is a point of elect uh, writing to the governor, quite frankly, at this point. It is in her hands. Or will be. And certainly Senator Kavanaugh our elected representatives with um, Deborah Glick and Grace Lee and Charles Fall. In a couple of years, it's going to be a lot more serious than the bike lanes. The banks won't lend and there won't be people living yes. in these buildings. So I, I think it's very serious. It's thank, thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, okay. We have actually Madeline uh, Roomley is here. So Madeline, I'm going to request, I apologize, I didn't see you earlier. You are the last to speak on the bike lanes. Welcome, Madeline. And your mic is open. Oh, it's now closed again. You hear me now? now? I yes. can, Madeline, thank All you. All right, hey, thank you everybody. I just want to speak in favor like everybody else. I don't know if you can see this, but this is my son and I at Battery Park biking. We go across the bridge. I have a three-year-old. Um, it is often not safe to bike in the area, but I have to um, just to get around. It can be hard often when the trains are not running between Brooklyn and Manhattan. I have family in Manhattan on both sides of my family where I'm a third, fourth, fourth or fifth generation Brooklynite on my um, son, on my husband's side. Um, and we have a lot of family in the city that we get around to. We don't have a car. So my bike is my primary form of transportation in addition to buses and subways. Uh, and I just um, want to echo that uh, safety is so important for children uh, and for moms like myself who want to get around in the area. And I think it's a really important thing that you all can do to make it easier for people to live, especially parents and moms like myself in the area. Uh, thank you so much for considering, and I hope that you pass this resolution put in the bike lane. Thank you, Madeline, um, and thank you for coming to Community Board 1. And with that, actually, Madeline is the last speaker from the public session for Community Board 1. So we're closing the public session at 632, moving right on to the public hearing. The public hearing is about uh, the Trust for Governors Island. And the uh, some comment and feedback we're gathering after the presentations this month, which we were. Um, so let's go straight to them. And we're going to start with Marissa. D. Domenicus, and I apologize if I butchered that slightly. And after. After her comes Wendy Brower and then Roger Manning. So the th if all 3 of you would please put your hands up. Uh, we found Marissa. Marissa, your mic is open. Welcome to Community Board 1. Thank you, Tammy, and thank you everyone in Community Board 1 for what you do. 
Um, so I'm here to speak to you to update you as to Earth Matters Compass Learning Center status. Um, I just want to let everyone know that we all are part of the conversations for all three proposals for the Climate Study Center. And we feel that all three proposals have attributes that support the community building on Governor's Island. Um, as everyone knows, uh, Earth Matter is located in the development zone where all three of these proposals are slated. Uh, you know, one of them will be built. And uh, we've had positive conversations with the trust as to what will happen to us. Um, you may recall as part of the uh, rezoning that the trust um, had uh, committed to long-term space for Earth Matter. Um, I have it here, it said that uh, the trust is in the process of working with Earth Matter to identify long-term space needs on Governor's Island and commits to reserving a designated potential future site for Earth Matter's compost process operations. Um, so they have uh, proposed a five-year um, lease for us, uh, which would bring us by the time the center gets underway, one of the proposals to get started, to locate us to what um, is considered to be uh, what is our first choice, also in the development zone, but not part of this first phase of the development. Um, and it would be great if we could be there. Uh, we'd love to be there. Um, and I think what we just want to apprise the community board of is that there's no definition for long-term space. Um, and when we kind of brought that to the attention, <laughs> when they said you can go out and get funding, um, there's, there's no, without any kind of a, a finite definition on what long-term is, it's going to be hard for us to raise money. Is long-term five years? Uh, is it 20 years? So we just would love to have assistance in understanding what the trust is able to commit to. We understand that it's the space is in the development zone and that in the future years, there'll be future RFPs. We've been moved four times. Um, I think the trust would love to be able to give us uh, some kind of a commitment, um, but it, at, the, at the moment it's not defined in, in that just, um, is something we would love to have resolved. Um, and if the community board um, could just in any way, shape or form, help us help the trust understand how important that would be to give us that stability to help the island with the composting and the zero waste efforts on the island, that would be greatly appreciated. I think we actually have already passed a, re a resolution, Marissa. We were looking for a permanent home for you there wasn't long term wasn't our words i think we were looking for permanence for your sighting on the island and we made sure that that was you know part and parcel to the feedback we did for the ulerp as well so we 100 percent support earth matters as one of our partner organizations beyond long term but as a you know, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. well thank you tammy but um, we don't understand what permanent would mean because uh, the site that they gave us is in the development zone. They initially, the day after the rezoning, showed us a site that they said uh, was in the North Island, which has potential issues with the historic uh, designation and the um, landmarks committee. But we did put a proposal um, in front of them that uh, would have been something that we felt we could live with. Um, and they came back to us and they said that they wouldn't be able to give us that site. So we're not sure where a permanent site would be uh, if it wasn't in the, in the, in the historic district. Um, so I, I don't know where, where we can go with that. Of course, we'd love a permanent site. Um, so we're just apprising you that uh, I'm not sure what the next steps would be. Um, we have uh, reached out to a, uh, our city council member, Christopher Marte. Um, and we'd love to understand what, what space could be available uh, because the space that uh, were shown to us by the trust, uh, the one site that we felt we could potentially work with if we got permission from landmarks to redesignate our area. Um, 
was not accepted by the trust. Well, it sounds like we should have another meeting and have a conversation. I know that um, we're perfectly happy to reach out to Claire and Sarah um, and see with our council members support what we can do. I know they are all on this call, so this would not be news to them. I'm sure they're not hearing it for the first time. So I, they are all here. I don't want to speak for them, certainly, but I know that Sarah is listening and I know that um, council member Marte's office is here listening. So um, we can also certainly get our newest assembly member fall involved because this is now in his district as well. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure, Marissa, for coming and reach out to Lucian, please, um, later this week. And I, obviously. Um, all right. Next is Wendy Brawler and then Roger Manning and then Gerald Farsberg. And then those are the only signups we have for our public hearing. Wendy? Let's see if I can find Wendy. I don't see her. Not seeing Wendy's hand up. I'm sure she'll come back. Roger Manning is next. Roger, your mic is open. I think so. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Roger Manning from, from the uh, Metro Area Governors Island Coalition, MAGIC. We also very much support uh, Earth Matter having, have, having a, a permanent space. And the, their work is certainly some of the most environmentally related work in the city. Um, but getting back to the uh, Trust Climate Center briefings, uh, they left out the main question which is, should there even be such a project on the island? Why is large private development on public land the only option presented for the future of Governor's Island? In 2020, CB1 also asked, why was there no alternative plan being presented when we were going through the ULER process? And then in 2003, everyone worked uh, together so that Governor's Island could always be a public place. And the resulting deed did not include as the city and the trust keep stating, uh, fueling the uh, city's economic engine. $1 billion and 7,000 jobs. Where's the data behind this claim? And the deed requires that any income generated on Governor's Island shall be, quote, uh, shall be applied solely, unquote, to the operation of Governor's Island. And the deed did not, also did not include um, essentially privatizing the island by turning it into a research campus. Um, at the briefings, only about 25% of the designated development zones was shown as being utilized for a climate center. We were told that the other 75% of the devel development zone um, would involve future RFPs, all of which would be allowed to be large, non-academic and commercial. Um, there was strong attendee disapproval of proposal number three's 22-story tower, which is twice, which would be twice the height of Liggett Hall and three times that of Outlook Hill. Uh, the 2021 rezoning wasn't necessary to bring um, in the Climate Center. Simply extending the 2013 Historic District Special Zoning would have been more than adequate for that. In any case, proposal number one seems to be by far the best slash least bad um, proposal that we saw at the briefings. Um, Community Board 1's uh, executive committee's idea of, of restating the December 2020 uh, CB1 resolution as response to um, the briefings, I think that's a, we think that's a good idea. But we urge CB1 to review the 2013 uh, historic district zoning as a guideline with regard to building heights, uh, mainly 35 foot heights and 60 foot, there's 60 foot heights for some categories there. Um, and the Governor's Island public uh, visiting, the visiting public is severely under-informed regarding these development plans and consistently shocked and outraged when they're told. That's a big issue. Um, and what's the best use of Governor's Island? Uh, magic on our website, we have a community statement signed by over 70 organizations and a alternative South Island visualization plan uh, on our website, which uh, ha ha, you know, has some answers. Uh, the website being GovIslandCoalition.org. And I think that's it, unless anybody has some questions for magic. I think we are good, Roger, because in a public hearing, it 
it is, is about your speaking and testimony, which we will take into the business session when we do a resolution. So I want to thank you so much for participating both in executive and here. Um, and and I thank you, Community Board One, for putting time in on this very important, important issue. Well, you know where we are. Don't be a stranger, as I said. All right. Um, Gerald is our next speaker, one of our board members who had signed up for the public session. Gerald. Thanks, Tammy. Um, I, after our last session, I was giving uh, this uh, Governor's Island uh, Climate Research Center cons uh, considerable um, thought, and, and I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to <clears throat> focus on the architecture. We've been presented at least three um, you know, designs so far, and um, I, I really care less about what the end product looks like uh, and more about what it does moving forward. Uh, and I want to encourage the uh, board to consider that, you know, the, the built environment is reported to generate 40% of annual global CO2 emissions. Of those total emissions, building operations are responsible for 27% annually, while building and infrastructure materials and construction are responsible for an additional 13% annually. Uh, operations, as you know, are comprised of building systems uh, such as mechanical, electrical, plumbing, supply, and waste systems. Um, while we've been told that the program is for a climate research center, little about the actual research that's being done uh, has really been discussed, or we don't, we don't really, ha we haven't heard anything about a program. Sorry. Uh, Gerald, as we move silent, forward, sorry about that. Um, Keep going. Again, I, I just want to encourage the board to consider language that specifically addresses the functionality of the structures of the buildings themselves. Uh, what are they doing to lend towards this research? It's not just the the uh, activities of research that happen within, but the actual structure and the systems. As one example, um, Earth Matters is a composting. Uh, they, they have tons of research behind them. They, they are very effective with what they do. And there is technology throughout the world that talks about biogas, taking the compost methane and turning it into an actual usable gas. Those are innovative technologies that I believe that this climate research center, should it move forward, needs to address at the beginning. And there needs to be a program um, that's outlined before anybody is awarded uh, such uh, such prestigious land uh, for their use. This is a public-private um, venture, and therefore the public must benefit the most from it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Gerald, for speaking. I have um, no other speakers signed up for the public hearing about the Trust for Governor's Island, so we're going to Close the public hearing at 646. I, mean, I think you're muted. Um, um, no, I hear her. I think, Gerald, your headphones are low. <laughs> you can't hear anything. Yeah, because I can hear you, Tammy. I hear you, too. All right. Get, uh, Gerald, it might be you. Sorry. All right. So let's get back. So let's get the agenda popped up. As I said, we're closing the public hearing at 646 um, and we'll start the business session. We do have um, some elected officials here as well as our elected representatives. Um, Deborah Glick, I know is going between community board one and community board three tonight. So we will start the business session off very quickly. We're gonna take the roll call vote for the minutes and then move on. So Lucian, can you please put the agenda up. Just one more minute. Luke is going to have that. I can probably do this at least this part by memory until it gets the agenda up. Um, do I has 
We're going to go for the October minutes. And I'm going to make a motion to approve the October minutes. I would second that motion, Tammy. Mimi, take it away for roll call. All righty. Uh, Amoruso. All right. Blank. Blank, yes. Thank you. Brown Kennedy. All right. Brown uh, Kennedy is excused. I apologize. Okay. Cameron. Cameron, yes. Thank you. Cassell. Cassell, yes. Thank you. Collie. Collie. All right. Uh, Chang. Chang, yes. Thank you. Chapman. Chapman, yes. Thank you. Charcutian. Charcutian, yes. Thank you. Cole. Cole, yes. Thank you. Coleman. Yes. Thank you. Corman. Corman, yes. Thank you. Kucha. Kucha, yes. Thank you. Curtis. Curtis, yes. Thank you. Airman. Bruce Airman. All right. Flores. Flores, yes. Thank you. Lynn, yes. Forsberg. Fix his audio yet. Come back to him. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Roman. Roman, yes. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant. Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta. Gupta, yes. Thank you. James. James, yes. Thank you. Joyce. Uh, Trisha, Joyce. All right. Jube. You, yes. Thank you. K. K, yes. Thank you. Canal. Canal, yes. Thank you. Kettering. Kettering, yes. Thank you. Copel. Joel Copel. Okay. Let's see. Lerner. Joe Lerner. All right. Lewinson. No. And uh, Lynn. Uh, Lynn, yes. Thank you. Lion. Lion, yes. Thank you. Mahoney. Nope. McHugh. Megan McHugh. Tammy Melter. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Minsley. Morton Minsley. Minsley, yes. Thank you. Uh, there's an echo. I think it's Bob. Sorry. Uh, Pat Moore. Moore, oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Pandya, and correct me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Ushma Pandya, keep going, and uh, Robinson, Robinson, yes, thank you, Snack, Snack, yes, Thank you. Star. Star, yes. Thank you. Jimmy Song. Jimmy Song, yes. Thank you. Vera Song. Vera Song, yes. Thank you. Townley. Townley, yes. Thank you. Z. 
uh, Chauzy. All right, Eric, you? You, yes. Thank you. Uh, Seltzer. Seltzer, yes. Thank you. And um, Forsberg, have you been able to rectify your audio? Yeah, apparently my mute was muting the whole system. My vote is yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I believe that's everybody. If um, yeah, it looks like that's everyone. Thanks. Okay, perfect. With that, we're going to go to our electeds. Um, we are honored to have Assembly Member Glick with us tonight, and so we will start with her. Thank you very much, and welcome, Deborah. Thank you, um, and I want to thank everybody from the 66th Assembly District for giving me an opportunity to continue to serve. Uh, and before I forget, uh, anybody who is going to be celebrating um, this uh, coming week, I uh, hope you and your family have a lovely Thanksgiving. Next week, I'll be in Albany. Uh, we have a joint meeting with a hearing, a public hearing with the Mental Health Committee and the Higher Ed Committee, which I chair, on the mental health needs of students at uh, colleges and universities. Obviously, um, we have a an enormous abundance of colleges in New York State, and the pandemic obviously has had many ramifications, and certainly on campuses and for college students and the faculty, it has been uh, an area that has been extremely challenging. So no, on November 30th at 10 a.m., we'll be having that hearing in Albany, but it is available on a live stream, which is in our board report, which I hope will be put in uh, the, um, the chat. Uh, although I'm not familiar with WebEx as I am with uh, Zoom. Um, also, a reminder that for the small business owners in the neighborhood, uh, PACE Small Business Development Center uh, continues to be an enormous resource uh, that we continue to direct people to, and they are extremely helpful, and it is free. So um, we know a lot of small businesses don't have a, an HR department and a legal department and an accounting department. That would be uh, the person who, and, uh, who owns the business. Um, we've had some, uh, positive things, uh, uh, coming out of, um, the governor's office and, uh, she announced release of the $5 million for the companion animal capital funds. It's a matching fund for humane societies, uh, and animal shelters, uh, something I've championed for a number of years and, um, they need to upgrade their, uh, their facilities and so often um, it is a volunteer operation. And so having an opportunity to be able to uh, get some new cages or some new equipment uh, with raising some money, but getting the state to match that has been extremely important. Uh, I testified the other day at um, a, uh, Homes and community renewal public hearing uh, about the uh, Housing Stability and Tenant Protection Act and the regulations that they are going to put in place. One of the most important regulations should focus on what we call first rent, and that's when they, when a landlord has um, combines two rent regulated units, and then all of a sudden it's essentially a new apartment, a new unit, and uh, they can set whatever rent they want. There are shockingly over uh, 60,000 rent regulated units being held off the market um, in the hopes that an adjoining unit may become vacant and then the landlord could combine it. Right now, those apartments are affordable housing, absolutely critically need for New Yorkers. And so uh, we hope that homes and community renewal will have strong regulations that will not allow the continued warehousing of vitally needed apartment units for our neighbors. Um, we, in, in the village we had, uh, and it's true in all of lower Manhattan, we have very old buildings and um, sometimes they are allowed to be demolished when there's neglect. 
uh, and we had a demonstration about uh, a new owner who just uh, did not follow Landmark's recommendations and essentially destabilized a 200-year-old building, um, and uh, they are being allowed to demolish it. Uh, I think there now are strong um, uh, reinforcement measures that are going to be put in place so that they will, in fact, have to uh, communicate uh, with both the Department of Buildings and L and landmarks uh, in a restoration operation, but it never should have come to this. And uh, obviously our history is crucial and people come to New York as tourists because they wanna see history and we're still a young country. So um, it's vital that these buildings are uh, properly maintained and that there isn't an incentive uh, to demolish them. Uh, obviously we're all focused on the um, Northwest uh, Battery Park City resiliency and the situation that's been going on where there hasn't been, in my humble opinion, enough feedback to the community response. And while they have said they are going to uh, extend a deadline, the deadline still doesn't give the uh, community board all of the time it needs to review what the plans are and the draft uh, EIS. So we'll continue to work with the community board to uh, insist that there be greater uh, responsiveness and that they, um, that they have imposed on themselves a deadline that is inconsistent with the ability of the community to participate. And finally, I will just say, <clears throat> I've issued a statement on yet another mass shooting targeting um, a minority group, uh, whether it's Uvalde or Club Q or uh, the synagogue in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, there are too many military style weapons that are allowed to be in the hands of individuals, frequently individuals uh, that are unbalanced. And uh, I'm very angry. Um, I will just read uh, a, a small section. The most recent attack at an LGBTQ nightclub and bar is both horrifying and enraging. The endless series of mass shootings has left the country once more preparing and repeating the same pained mantra without any reasonable common sense resp response on the part of, and this is partisan, I apologize, but it is the Republican Party. Their tiresome prayers and thoughts should stick in their throats as more American families will celebrate yet another holiday of hollow Thanksgiving for the callous indifference their Second Amendment orthodoxy brings to America. Um, that's just a little taste of how angry I am. Uh, I'm angry because it doesn't have to happen. There were red flag laws ignored. Um, it's hard to get any legislation passed but the legislation that gets passed is, um, is not enforced and is not utilized. So we have red flag laws when somebody who's seemingly uh, a danger to others is allowed to keep their uh, very, very powerful military style weapons uh, is shameful, shameful. And um, there's no excuse for it. Uh, we can never be safer if we continue to allow military style weapons on the streets and in our gathering places. And we have to see that people stop demonizing people who don't look the way we think the majority should look. And um, with that, I will um, close my comments uh, and hope that at some point, uh, sanity uh, will return to this country. Deborah, thank you um, so very, very much. I'm going to open it up to board members. Um, if you have a question for Deborah, please raise your hand. I do see tons of claps coming. So um, we appreciate all of the efforts and everything that you are doing and saying for the office. If you don't mind moving Bruce Ehrman over, I see that he's here. Um, and let's see, hands up. Does anyone have any questions for Deborah? Mm, 
I don't see any hands up. Wow. Uh, Great. So, oh, I spoke too fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Deborah. We're going to go to Rosa Chang first and then Wendy Chapman. Deborah, thank you so much for everything that you just said because the definition of insanity is doing the same damn thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And I, I literally cannot understand and fathom why we are here again and again and again. What can we do? What can we do? Well, I, I think actually America did speak up uh, uh, in the midterm elections in a way that had not been anticipated so that at least some sense of returning to at least the ability to talk across party lines uh, may uh, come into play, although we'll see what happens in the House and with a narrow uh, majority uh, on the um, Republican side of the aisle. Um, the NRA is not speaking for, you know, gun owners, uh, most of whom support universal background checks, most of whom actually are comfortable with red flag laws. Uh, they are speaking only for the manufacturers. Uh, so, you know, there have been some lawsuits uh, uh, going after um, gun manufacturers themselves. There is a, a limited liability, if not a full liability protection for them. And that's the first step, getting that, uh, removing any uh, shield uh, from gun manufacturers, because they are Look, they market to young, disaffected people. Uh, there's no uh, mistake. Now, New York State, um, we have a lot of laws in place. We have uh, had the Supreme Court come in and kick a 100-year-old law down the road. Um, and uh, they, they have challenged us. So we passed... Uh, a new way to have concealed carry, and some of that's being challenged. I found it shocking to walk into a store over the weekend that said, you know, uh, properly licensed concealed weapons are permitted. And then I thought, oh boy. <laughs> um, you know, so we try to do things even in this state, and the Supreme Court has. Um, has a different view. Uh, you know, they say they're originalists and I say, fine, everybody's allowed to have a musket. Uh, if that's what they want, they're entitled to a musket. It gives you about, you know, uh, a minute and a half to kick the gun out of their hand. So, um, uh, we still have to, uh, call people to account for the, you know, uh, vitriol, the xenophobia, the racism, the misogyny, the, you know, uh, homophobia, the anti-Semitism, it is all out there and they've been given permission and it is up to all of us to stand up and say, no, we're not going to let you ban books because you don't like uh, what's in them. Uh, it's a big fight, uh, but we are the majority. We are the majority and we will continue to fight and push back and succeed. Awesome, Deborah, thank you. You have more hands up, believe it or not. Wendy, put your hand down, but if you still uh, want to- Yeah, speak, no, yeah, I still go. had a- Okay, yeah. go. After um, Wendy, it'll be Bernard and then Cody. So it's a different topic, but it's the same thing in terms of I wanted to congratulate you on your win, but also to thank you again for putting New York State's abortion law in place, you know, way before, actually, when you brought it up, I thought it was really unnecessary. And your forwardness in terms of thinking about where things are going. Um, I just wanted to thank you on that front and also just ask if there's any sort of practical updates that you have in terms of how New York State is helping women in other states because um, my child goes to college in a, in a state where it, this is going to be a reality. So, you know, it might be a friend of a friend of a friend that we hear about in the future that needs help. And I would just love to hear more about, I know New York City is 
and New York State is working on that, but could you tell us a little more? Uh, yes, actually, thank you very much for that. Um, number one, the governor put out $25 million to support, um, uh, to add capacity uh, for uh, Planned Parenthood and for independent uh, uh, clinics because um, half of uh, the uh, reproductive health uh, is done in independent clinics, not just in Planned Parenthood. An additional 10 million to provide resources for security uh, at uh, clinics. Um, next year, we may have, um, there's a uh, gender health uh, fund that is being discussed. And most importantly, there will be a constitutional amendment that pa we to pass an amendment has to pass two separate legislatures uh, before it can go before the public. So an amendment, um, uh, sort of a New York State ERA that includes uh, pregnancy and pregnancy outcomes as well as sexual orientation and gender identity and expression will has had first passage in the current legislature. It will have second passage in the next legislature and be on the ballot in November. November is kind of an off year. There will be municipal elections in New York City, which is good because that'll bring a lot of people out, but it's a statewide measure. And so making certain that we do not have reactionary forces uh, marshaled against us as they were when we had voting rights amendments before us that lost. Uh, it is crucial that we be out there in force around the state, ensuring that this ERA passes and becomes part of our constitution, enshrining it um, forever. So that's what's on the, the you know, um, and we have protections for uh, providers uh, who may be harassed by other jurisdictions because someone from their state has traveled here. Uh, the biggest issue was um, that there's actually attempts to, to ban uh, travel for the purpose of seeking an abortion. Free travel is allowed in the state, in the country. It is a constitutional right unless you are uh, a pregnant person seeking an abortion, then if you are in a state that doesn't allow abortion, they don't want you to be able to travel somewhere else. Is so, New York gonna help uh, with any of these data privacy uh, inquiries and that type of thing? Um, yes, uh, there is work uh, being done on that as okay, well. Okay, thank you. Okay, Bernard Lynn, you're next and then Cody. Yes, I have a question I haven't heard on the agenda is that, uh, is there anything that address the current crime situation? Because I think, you know, I live here in this neighborhood for past uh, 20 years, and I think the situation to be deteriorating. I'm not sure all the members have experienced that, at least I have. For example, my building in the past six months has three burglary and all uh, the package room have been uh, pry open and things stolen. And uh, I've been harassed on the street and I have a friend get assaulted on the subway train and the police didn't do anything. Well, I, I, like that. I'm very, very sorry uh, to hear about your friend being ass assaulted. It's, um, it's outrageous, but also very, uh, emotionally difficult for that person and for all of their friends and family. Um, and it has a chilling effect on everybody. Uh, so I would say that, um, number one, uh, the police uh, have, uh, in my humble opinion, not done what they need to do in terms of having regular um, get out of the cars, be on the street, have regular patrols, foot patrols uh, and targeting areas that have had uh, significant problems. Uh, they are, I saw an announcement that they are starting to move uh, toward doing more uh, quality of life crimes. I'm not sure exactly what that means, uh, but I do think that the uh, desire of the 
um, uh, the mayor to see that the uh, subway situation is dealt with has more police on in the subway system, but frankly, uh, I just see them standing on a platform. Uh, I don't know that is really helpful. They should be moving up and down the platform. They should be moving through the station. Uh, they should be getting on the train and off the train. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that there is, uh, if the issue is about getting uh, people uh, who may be deterred, they're not going to be deterred if there's uh, two officers uh, standing in one place for, uh, you know, 20 minutes. I don't think that that's really what should be uh, the plan. Uh, and I also think they have to get out of their cars and be on the street. Um, so, you know, I think there'll be more discussion. Uh, clearly, there have been some conversations. We did change. We did change some measures uh, in Albany so that recidivists can, in fact, be subject to bail if they are engaged in um, criminal activity after they've been released on their own recognizance. Now the DAs have to do it. Thank you very much for that. Um, Bernard, I think we'll also have the city council person's rep address that on a more local level. Uh, Deborah, thank you. Cody is our last uh, question for this evening. Hi, um, thank you so much, Assemblymember. Um, my question is: um, New York City has seen around 220 people killed by traffic violence this year, and we've had around 43,000 who've been injured. Do you foresee any movement on legislation in Albany, such as Sammy's Law, and other? Um, um, in the coming year well um as you know um i've been uh the champion of red light and speed cameras we did expand the speed cameras to 24 7. um i am in the process of writing to the superintendent of state police asking for enforcement of obscured um, um uh, license plates uh because that is almost epidemic. Um, I think the police should be handing out uh, violations regularly. Um, and uh, I, I don't know whether they can confiscate uh, the material, but I think that um, I'll, I'll be finding out about that. Uh, and I do think that uh, according to the city, though, in 2019, when we did an expansion of uh, speed cameras. They said that essentially covered the city. They've come back, the new administration has come back and said that there's about 18% of the city that is not covered by speed cameras. And so we'll be coming back, uh, trying to raise consciousness um, with my colleagues uh, to get that expansion. Um, as far as uh, the full, uh, control of um, city uh, streets by DOT. Um, I'm not sure uh, where that stands. Um, we're also going to have a whole lot of new people moving around because of retirements and people who've lost their elections. So committee chairs are going to go 52 card pickup and switching around. So I'm not sure who the chair of transportation will be. Um, I actually have a good friend now who is um, and receptive, uh, so I hope he doesn't move. Uh, so I'm hopeful that we can get um, more uh, safety measures put in place. Um, you know, uh, we should, you know, require a road test from everybody from another state so they at least know they can't turn right on red. They can't, what our speed limits really are, that they actually have to stop at stop signs. Uh, you know, um, it's an ongoing uh, thing. And I also think that some of the street um, confusion is also that we have many, many more different kinds of motorized vehicles out there, most of which are not licensed. So we have mopeds and um, um, all sorts of different electric vehicles that, not everybody's following the rules, and that has, I think, added to some of the confusion. 
Uh, so if everybody just followed the rules and shared the ro road appropriately, maybe we could save a few lives. But the big issue is people not uh, people speeding. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Deborah, there is one more hand, and I always sure, uh, no, we're going to make okay. Joe Lerner the last for the night. Joe, the floor is yours. I might have to leave, so I wanted to wish the board members um, a happy Thanksgiving because I'm here in sunny California at my daughter's <laughs> place. <laughs> oh, you're uh, I'll, I'll stay tuned as far as I can. All righty, thank you. Thanks. Well, Joe. that's that's definitely the best hand of the evening, um, and I wish again everybody uh, a happy and healthy uh, celebration, however they choose to do that. Thank, thank you, Deborah, and uh, we're excited to have you still as our elected representative. So thank you all so much for all of the hard work, and we will now take it to our elected reps. Hannah Wienerman, you are up first, um, and I'll give the order so everybody knows where we're going. Hannah, and then Emily, and then Theo, and then Max. So let me get down to Hannah's name. Tammy, are we giving them three minutes or? Yes. For all of our elected reps, if you would just go ahead and raise your hand, that will be. Yep. Um, Hannah Wienerman from Congressman Nather's office. Um, I'll go as quickly as I can. I have a few updates for you. So, um, first, the Respect for Marriage Act, which would repeal DOMA and enshrine marriage equality under federal law, got closer to passage in the Senate last week. And the, so, and Congressman Nather introduced this bill in 2009. So, we're looking forward to it being passed both in the Senate and then again in the House and then sending it to the president's desk for signature. Uh, president Biden just announced that the Department of Education will extend the payment pause on student loans through June 30th, 2023 um, to provide relief to borrowers as the Supreme Court hears the case regarding the payment relief plan. Um, to follow up on some of the questions that you had for last time, in terms of the World Trade Center Health Program bill, our office is currently working with Speaker Pelosi's office and the Energy and Commerce Committee to find a way to get the bill introduced into the year and omnibus. So the RDC folks have had several meetings with um, their staff in the past couple of weeks, and they're still working to pay, uh, find a pay for it for this legislation. Um, our office has also been working with Senator Gillibrand, who leads the bill in the Senate, and the Department of HHS to make technical changes to the bill so that it could be an NDAA amendment, which could also be added to the omnibus. So we're trying to find different ways to make sure this is added to the must-pass omnibus by the end of the year. Um, Speaker Pelosi staff also assured us that, that they would talk to Senator Schumer's team about finding a pay for for the bill. So again, these talks are ongoing. I will happily provide updates as we hear from leadership. And if you have any specific questions, you can feel free to contact me directly. Um, in terms of helicopters, uh, Congressman Nather submitted public comment yesterday opposing a new FAA uh, National Park Service proposed voluntary agreement that would increase tourism helicopter traffic over Manhattan. Uh, Congressman Nather is circulating a multi-member letter uh, on the issue next week, and our office is trying to move uh, legislation through the House to restrict non-essential helicopters over New York City. Uh, lastly, in context of helicopters, we're starting to circulate a letter to Mayor Adams requesting that his administration ends concession contracts for tourist and commuter helicopters at city-owned heliports. For the African American Burial Ground uh, Museum that somebody asked about last, uh, last time, uh, Congressman Nather is engaged with leadership on the bill. We're hoping to get a hearing in natural resources during the lame duck. Uh, Natural Resources Committee, sorry, doing the lame duck session. And again, we're attempting to get that bill into the year and package. In terms of the 9-11 Memorial Museum, um, after leading um, an appropriations amendment in the House to increase federal funding to the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, we are now leading a bicameral letter to the House and Senate appropriators to ensure that this increase is included in the omnibus. Congressman Nather is working to pass legislation that would grant emergency funding to the 9-11 Memorial and Museum for Security. This funding would also allow the 9-11 Memorial and Museum to extend the museum hours. Um, Alice had a question last time about um, MCC. I don't have an update on that yet. We haven't gotten any new plans, but we will keep talking. And I, if I get any new information, I will come back. And then lastly, we are working very closely with Congressman-elect Dan Goldman to ensure a natural transition of many of the issues that we've been working on. But again, a lot of these issues are ongoing and just because we're just a little bit uptown doesn't mean that we uh, can't be an advocate and can't work with CB1 on various things. So 
I will pause there. I want to wish everyone a wonderful Thanksgiving and happy to answer any questions. And we do have hands up. So thank you, Hannah. And just for the board members, I do want to note that what Hannah was speaking about in regards to the National Park Service and um, helicopters is they put out a RFP with not enough time in a public comment period for the community board to opine. But the trust is aware that allows um, a full loop of helicopters over Governor's Island. Fantastic. All right. Um, for hands up that I have seen that are going to go in this order, Bruce, Mimi, and then Justine. Everybody from our side has two minutes. Thank you. Hi, it's Bruce. Well, all I want to say is that um, we're losing Hannah, I guess, after next month. And she has been just personally of so much help. She, she's the most wonderful community liaison for the most wonderful representative. And uh, I can't tell you how many times she's helped me as a, as a, as just a constituent in so many ways, more than any other office. Uh, and I'm going to miss you and see you again. I hope. That's so sweet. Thank you. I'm well, I, as my grandmother would say. That's very, very sweet. What did um, you say? What did you say? Hannah? I I'm spelling. Oh, <laughs> great. Yeah. I will say that we should have moved you over so we could see your face um, to see the reactions. Just saying. All righty. Um, Mimi, you're next. And then Justine. Hi. I, um, so the lame duck session is the Sunshine Protection Act something that we could talk about before the new legislature? Sure, I don't, I don't know what it's doing in the house right now. Let me check back on that. I know that it um, was introduced in the Senate, but let me get some information and I'm happy to, you know, shoot you an email with um, the update that I get. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Mimi. Justine. Thanks so much, Tammy. Um, I'll be quick. Hannah, I just wanted to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and it was nice doing jury duty with you and thank you for everything that you do. And have done so much appreciated, especially for all the 9 11 uh, funding and everything else that, that the council member has uh, that the representative has done. So thank you. You will be missed. We have you for 1 more month. And I'll Bye. happily come to the holiday party if you invite. Yes, me. So just send me the that, info. right? <laughs> thank you. Uh, Wendy Chapman, you're next. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. I wanted to just uh, thank the um, congressman for all the the 9-11 push, because um, until it passes, um, you know, we're still very concerned that um, the extra funding for the residents and actually the future people who aren't even sick yet. Um, and I know you're working on that. I know you're pushing it. I'm sure there's things going on behind the scenes, but um, I just wanted to bring it up again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. And Is good it, luck. <laughs> does anybody else have anything else for Hannah or Congressman Natler? Well, I will say I hope to see you in December at our full board meeting and we will have a thank you very much. It's been amazing um, having you as our rep. Please do thank Congressman Nadler. I think his imprint on Lower Manhattan has been outsize, outsizes his stature and physicality. Um, he will be well, well thought of and well remembered long, long, long time in CB1. And please express that. So thank you and happy Thanksgiving. I will see you next month, everyone. All right, uh, moving along. Emily, welcome. Try to keep this brief. So, as many of you probably know already, last night the governor vetoed our bill S nine zero three one A, which would have expanded the Battery Park City Authority Board from seven to nine members and required that a majority of members be residents. Um, we are very disappointed in this outcome, as I know you all are as well. We put out a very brief statement earlier today that you can find on our website. Um, but our office and the senator are very committed to continuing to work on this issue. We are going to keep talking to the governor's office about this and pushing them on it and see what we can get done during the next legislative session. 
Additionally, we still have our other Battery Park City bill, S9032B, which we're still advocating for the governor to sign. Um, our Senate staff is having conversations with the governor's team about technical changes, and we're hopeful that that one will get signed soon. On the community side, um, on 250 Water Street, we're happy to report that phase one of the remediation has officially been completed and the site is all covered up. Um, we've confirmed with Howard Hughes that there are no plans to begin the next phase of work anytime before next February, which will involve foundation construction and phase two of the remediation work. And we'll continue to monitor that and make sure that the community and the working group is fully engaged. We were also glad to see that the Trust for Governors Island ended up providing a hybrid option for their second community briefing at the urging of both our office and the community board. So thank you, Tammy, for your work on that. And we're going to continue to stay engaged and push for thorough community outreach, including to our Brooklyn community boards in our district that are also going to be affected by this. Um, we've also heard from some constituents lately, especially in the FIDI area, about illegal weed dispensaries that have been popping up. And I know the board has been talking a lot lately about the illegal vape stores, um, but at least for the weed dispensaries, those are under state level jurisdiction by the Office of Cannabis Management. They manage um, sort of the enforcement on that and we're encouraging folks who are concerned to report these stores through the appropriate channels. And um, I'm happy to send that information to Lucian who can get it out to anyone who is seeing those and wants to report. Um, and finally, um, our office hosted two really great flu shot and COVID booster drives across the district this month, one at Smith Houses and one at Meltzer Tower over in CB3. We were able to vaccinate a bunch of people and we're happy to do more of these and partner with CB1 or any organizations in the area if um, folks feel like there's a need, especially um, bringing COVID boosters directly to senior centers or senior buildings in the district for people who may not want to go out um, to get them. So I think I'll leave it there. I'm happy to take any questions and hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Okay, uh, thank you, Emily. Looking for hands up. Uh, seeing no hands up, I will say thank you very much and have a lovely Thanksgiving. All righty, um, moving right along. We have Theo next. Theo, I see your hand. Thank you so much. You are muted. Welcome, Theo. I'm at you from the Office of Assembly Member New with a few quick updates for the month. First of all, we wish you all a happy start to the holiday season. Uh, earlier today, we were just outside of CB1 up at Sarah D. Roosevelt Park doing a turkey drive. We were happy to get uh, several hundred turkeys and bags of groceries out to the community. We hope you all enjoy Thanksgiving and the holidays to come and that you uh, think about how we can all be giving back to our community at this time. As for other updates, we wanted to flag for you all the Adult Survivors Act. So uh, earlier this week, Assembly Member New spoke at a press conference hosted by Safe Horizons, an organization that supports victims of sexual and, uh, violence and domestic assault, noting, that was a little backwards in my notes there, noting the impending implementation of the Adult Survivors Act. So this is important for people to know. On November 24th, a look back window for the Adult Survivors Act opens up. That means if you are a survivor of sexual assault were 18 years or older during the incident, even if the statute of limitations has passed for the next year, you have the opportunity to sue. So that's a one year window, even if the statute of limitations has passed uh, to sue the offending individual or institution. If you think you may be interested in seeking damages pursuant to this law, we urge you to reach out to a lawyer as soon as possible. A year will go by quickly. Uh, and if you have questions, we encourage you to either reach out to our office or to look at the Safe Horizons website for more information. Uh, Emily spoke a bit about our Battery Park City bills, which we carry in the Assembly and they do in the Senate. Uh, we did get the unfortunate news last night that Governor Hopel has chosen to veto A103717, the bill for majority representation on Battery Park City. We are uh, very disappointed by this. We did not find the governor's rationale all that convincing, especially given that Roosevelt Island on the other side of Manhattan has a similar sort of authority structure and already has majority representation on their boards in the books. Um, so we are, you know, hopeful though we are disappointed that we won't be the ones to deliver this bill to you all. We hope that in the year to come, we can get it. You guys can all get it passed once we're out of office. Um, that's all we have on that. We have a full statement that should be, if it's not live yet, we'll be live by the time this meeting is over. Um, finally, we wanted to mention that 
Uh, Yulene's heart goes out to all those who were killed and injured in the hateful attack at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. Uh, in a statement, she wrote that the incident is a grim reminder that the hateful language purposefully amplified by right-wing media networks and pundits, even elected officials, is radicalizing people to commit mass murder. We cannot and must not continue down this destructive path. Uh, even more close to home on that same day, the authorities thwarted attempts by two individuals here on in New York who seemed intent to commit some sort of anti-Jewish hate attack. Uh, so in light of all this hateful rhetoric and action, needing to work together to call out hateful rhetoric and to protect all the diverse communities that call New York home. Uh, that is what I have for you all. Happy to answer any other uh, questions about battery. Oh, the other Battery Park City bill with Screedry and the land lease extension. Um, I'm the legislative guy in our office, so I've been in talks with central staff about that, trying to get a chapter amendment through so we can get it passed, trying to make sure the language uh, protects all of our tenants in the area. I know someone earlier was asking about the land lease extension. Um, I'm, you know, nothing's done till it's done, but I'm pretty confident about the land lease extension park. The talks we're having right now have more to do with language around scree and tree. That, now that's all. <laughs> now that's all. Okay, Theo. Thank you very, very much. We hope Assembly Member New will join us next month um, so we can say thank you and goodbye appropriately for her um, as her last month as our elected rep due to redistricting. So thank you so very much. Do I see any hands up? Seeing no hands up, thank you so much. And we move to Max. Oh, Max. Uh oh. I wonder if we lost Max. Lucian, did we lose Max? Maybe. I'm going to refresh the screen and see if he returns to us. I'm here. Nope, there um, we are. Yeah, yeah. So, hi, everyone. Um, so, some quick updates um, from our office. Uh, the other week, we co-hosted with CUNY and Immigration Clinic at BMCC. And we had uh, um, 117 immigrants registered for green cards. And then another 79 uh, green card holders, you know, got help moving towards citizenship. So really great. And we're hoping this to be an, an ongoing project and not just a one time event. So if you or if you know someone who's looking for immigration help, looking for assistance, you know, reach out to our office. We'll let you know when, when, when our next our next uh, uh, clinic is going to be. The council member last week or the, or the other week visited with Generation Citizen, the Harbor School, uh, spoke to seniors there about kind of government, some of the issues facing the city. You know, the Harbor Schools continues to be kind of a partner with our office at a place, you know, where we, you know, investing a lot and, you know, are kind of happy to, you know, help out and, you know, meet the kids there and, you know, kind of work with them. Uh, we have two new street co namings in Community Board One. Um, last week, the, uh, the intersection of Hogan Place and Baxter Street is now Benjamin Ward Way to honor Benjamin Ward, who was the first Black commissioner, uh, police commissioner of New York. And then Center Street and Walker Street is now um, Harold Louis Street, who was the founder of CPC. Kind of, you know, created like this massive, you know, nonprofit uh, organization in Chinatown, done a lot for the community. So, yeah, you know, if you if you have open uh, street claiming ideas, you know, things you want to see, reach out to our office. We're happy to help you and, you know, kind of moving things forward, you know, the next year. And then uh, just last quick update, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, there was the big outdoor dining rally outside 250 Broadway last week. The council member was there and, you know, we're you know calling for public hearings on the outdoor dining bill that's currently being worked on. Um, and we expect the kind of the final draft of that outdoor dining legislation to be released sometime early next year. And so kind of, and, you know, we don't know all the details now, but we're hoping and asking for some, you know, public input in that process. And so with that, you know, wish you happy Thanksgiving and take any questions. Max, no running away. Let's see what we've got for you. <laughs> I know that Joe Lerner had spoken up, uh, not Joe, Bernard Lim had spoken up earlier about crime and, um, seeing an uptick in robbery. And I don't know if you were here when assembly member Glick was talking about it, but if you could, um, she spoke briefly about uh, um, repeat offenders and things like that. But if you could give any input from a city council side to, you know, what's the status with funding and policing and things like that. Yeah, so you know, what I can, you know, from what I know is, is mainly from just the, the first precinct. Um, I encourage, especially if you have, like, I think if specifically yet, yeah, I would recommend going to the community council meetings. Um, they're very uh, informative when it comes to the, they do a full uh, Captain Smith there does a full breakdown of the diff of the different crimes that are happening, you know, in in our area um, in in the first precinct, which I think covers all of CB one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
you know, so from what I understand there, at least, you know, on, on his side, you know, their side of things, a lot of these robberies that are happening, it's a lot of uh, high end, you know, retail stores being, being robbed, but some, you know, I know that some, some, a lot of these robberies, especially the more expensive ones, it seems to be a lot of people who are like leaving their key in their car, uh, leaving their door unlocked. And so I think, you know, just one message that they had, I know at, at the community council meeting is, you know, lock your doors, don't leave your, your key in the ignition things like that. I can't, I can't speak to funding in terms of those things that I don't, I don't know too much on that, but I can definitely bring that back. See, see where things stand. Um, and, and, you know, on that, that, that side of things. Um, yeah, I hope that that answers the question. And yeah, I'll just say, you know, if you have specific questions on like specific crimes or, you know, in the neighborhood, I, you know, really recommend going to the community council, the first precinct, you know, they, they can answer any questions, you know, way more in depth and, you know, give you details of, of the, of all the stats. Awesome. Thank you, Max. Let's see. Do I see any hands up? Seeing no hands up, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving and we will see you around. Sounds good. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks, Max. Okay. And with that, um, we end all the updates from our elected officials and move directly to the district manager's report. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Tammy. I'm Lucian Reynolds. I'm the district manager of CB1. I just want to start off by wishing everyone. Uh, a very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope um, uh, everyone is safe uh, and to all those who are traveling, uh, uh, best of luck. Um, start off with a, a little uh, bit of information from the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. They're estimating that this year um, between Wednesday and um, Monday, the 23rd to the 28th respectively, uh, 4.1 million vehicles will use the bridges and tunnels over that six day period. Um, this will be sim similar to vehicular volume over the same pre pandemic holiday period in 2019. So it's it's uh, back to the future here um, in terms of congestion. Um, so they're recommending uh, everyone to arrive to the airports um, early, at least two hours in advance. Um, international flights, at least three hours. Um, so please uh, take that uh, take those um, uh, urgings into to, to heart uh, because it's going to be a, a, a pretty wild travel season. Um, at, the begin at the beginning of the month, I met with Evelyn Collado from the office of the New York City Controller about CB1 standing request to be part of the conversation around the Battery Park City Joint Purpose Fund. Um, the the office promised uh, 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 more engagement and followed and followed through by attending the Battery Park City Committee meeting. Justine can speak more to, on this, but uh, I'm hopeful that they are they are hearing us on this. I met with the Department of Cultural Affairs um, about the steps that the community board would need to take if it were to request statues or more monuments in the future um, anywhere within the district. So um, there may be some conversations around that uh, in the future, but uh, we have a better idea of, of how to formulate any requests should the, the board wish to make them. I also had a meeting with uh, Amazon, a, a couple of people with Amazon about their last mile delivery operation at Cliff Street. They agreed to work with us on making it better, um, but it, it's clear that uh, there's a long road ahead of us to, to, to make it so it's not uh, aggravating the neighbors. I will engage with the neighbors and the first precinct um, to bring them up to speed uh, and also to uh, the, would like the, the first precinct to be more of a partner um, as the conversation progresses with uh, Amazon. So. Uh, to all those who are are sending me uh, reports about the noise, uh, uh, unsightliness, um, I'm, I'm hearing you and we're going to find out how we can make this better. Lastly, uh, I had a small meeting with DCAS to preview uh, an upcoming concession uh, for the former Corte Cafe space at 2 Lafayette Street next to the Municipal Credit Union. Um, this is a space that really was mostly used by city employees working at 1 Center Street and 2 Lafayette Street. Um, but there was, uh, uh, when Corte Cafe left, it really eliminated the last um, convenient place that one could find food close to 1 Center Street. Um, so they're looking to uh, put uh, another food tenant in there uh, sometime in the future. So that's something to keep your eyes out for. So with that, Tammy, I hand it back to you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, 
move the next slide, please? Oh, oh wait, uh, Daron has a hand up asking you a question. Lucian, I apologize. Thank you, uh, and Lucian, thank you for your, your report. The, um, the, the Amazon thing you mentioned is literally outside my window. I can see it and we hear it every morning. What's the, um, it, so it started a few weeks back. Is this like a t temporary long-term thing or is this like here for forever? Until that the parking lot gets developed, or they they're really bad and they get kicked off, kicked out. Yeah, the, I, I'm not. I I can try to find out the duration of their lease. However, um, I suspect that as their uh, needs for additional capacity for last mile delivery service for Whole Foods, and this and this is their Whole Foods arm, right? Um, Definitely is only increasing as people come back downtown. Um, I don't suspect that they'll want to uh, give up this site uh, because it is a through lot site. And so they're able to pull the, the box trucks through the lot is my understanding. Um, so um, the, there are a couple things that I think are, are long term um, uh, approaches to making this better. And that is trying to find ways to uh, encourage them to use parking garages. This is part of the. The, the proposal that the borough president's office um, uh, had put out. That's something that is likely going to be discussed next month in transportation. Um, but, uh, but in terms of today, uh, getting the sound, uh, uh, sound attenuation strategies uh, employed is going to be really the most important uh, tactic that we can do. And so we have to think about um, how they're using the site currently and then what sorts of ways they can baffle the sound to kind of minimize the echoing because it is a canyon there and it's only going to, as you know, uh, uh, everything gets trapped and, and just bounces back and forth. So that's that's going to be the name of the game. But the zoning for that lot is such that I don't suspect that they're going to have any issues um, uh, with any kind of enforcement coming through because what they're using the lot for is actually what it's intended to be used for um, under the zoning. So I need to really find a way to proactively work with them until there's a better site that opens up for those purposes. That's the short term. Okay, thanks. Francis. Do we know if there's like a is there a parking garage that has that like the two sides to it? Like is that is that does that exist in, in nearby? It, yes. Uh, yeah, it, I, I I mean I'd have to do more of a survey. I think the, some of the drivers, the people who do some driving uh, would know better than me offhand. Tammy saying yes. Um, but again, you know, there's, I don't know exactly what the delivery service area is for those, you know, there's certain things that they don't share with me, but, uh, it's certainly a conversation that we will keep having with them. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll develop this. Daron. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay. Francis is next. Francis, go ahead. Um, so. Besides the canyon in the parking lot, what um, we also have a situation on Fulton Street where they have sort of just taken over parts of uh, the the street there during the day, uh, and the congestion is is really getting crazy. And I'm wondering if the transportation committee uh, is noted that or is looking into that, but I guess that's a question for them. I know that it's been yeah. put up at other meetings, but they, 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 I tell you, Fulton Street during the day between all, they have, they, they've taken over like two blocks where they have set up their whole operation there where they, you know, uh, distribute their packages. So I wonder if that's been noticed and is being, yeah. can be dealt with. Francis, you're you're absolutely right. The, the last mile, and this is am, not just Amazon, but lots of different last mile courier services. Laser ship is another uh, big offender. Um, it's just in terms of, you know, the the people who do the last mile stuff, um, just kind of haphazardly take over a curb lane, take over a plaza, take over a sidewalk, and um, uh, currently the city does not have a plan to address that. Um, this is also part of uh, what the transportation committee is likely to take up as part of the borough president's proposal. Um, it, it's the, the proposal is meant to address this thing. There's the two arms of Amazon is the food arm and then the parcel arm. So uh, both have to 
be solved at the same time. Uh, and, and that's something that we're going to do, but that's, that's a much more longer term. Um, at least I, I, I look forward to the, the presentation because as I understand it, the toolkit is more medium and long term, though Betty can um, correct me uh, when we get to that, that part. Um, I'll leave that to her. Okay, seeing no more raised hands. Um, and thank you very much, everybody. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Chairperson's report. Next slide. This is where we've been for the month um, in terms of chair meetings and things like that. I sincerely want to say thank you to the Trust for Governors Island for being um, willing uh, to not only open the RFP a window for the public to see into having the two meetings, but for live streaming the last meeting. It was unprecedented, unheralded, and we truly appreciate the push and support from our elected leadership. Um, to make sure that the public does hear and see more of what's happening on the jewel of an island that is our backyard. Many people have stated over the course of the dialogues in the last few years that I've been here that they didn't know it. They didn't see it. It's really hard to do engagement. So we really appreciate the extra effort that they made for the community center briefing too to do live stream. I had a nice opportunity. I did 1 of the borough presidents implicit bias training classes. I encourage everyone and anyone who did not have an opportunity to go to any of the trainings in November to know that there will be more training coming up. Um, we do if anybody's feeling like they need kind of a land use 101 in the office. We do have a small uh, presentation that we can certainly circulate if you need a little bit of a brush up on that. Um, the BPCA scoping. Uh, meeting that was held November 16th, um, the, they will be coming back to the community board with answers from their September meeting and more information from the scoping meeting. And you'll see that coming up too. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, this is a tough one. So for those who know Robert Simcoe, and it's hard to imagine anybody in lower Manhattan that doesn't. Um, Rob, we lost Robert Simcoe as a member of our community on November 10th this year. Um, I personally knew Robert. I think most people on the board do. If you didn't know Robert, you knew and saw his work. Um, he and his wife were the creators and founders of the broadsheet, which reports on lower Manhattan, but more than being what I would like to call a gentleman journalist, because he truly was a gentleman. Um, he was a community builder. It depends on how you look at who builds community and things like that. But not only is he is was a visionary communicator, but he really strove to uplift and spread the words of what was going on in lower Manhattan through print and photos. So his wife was gracious and sent me a couple of photos. Some of them were beautiful of him baking bread and making music and making many things. I urge you, I will not repeat the broadsheet article because it's a beautiful insight from all the people of his family for what, you know, who he was beyond what we saw. Um, but for us on the community board and in public service, I think the photos here show what we know, you know, an extraordinary contemplative person who, you know, was just always in the neighborhood. You might not have known him by sight, but he was kind of everywhere um, and really strove to provide a window and learn how to build community. You read the broadsheet, you could see local things. And so for that, um, at 752, I'm actually going to ask for a moment of silence.
thank you all. Um, Robert's wife told me that they will be doing something um, as a way to commem celebrate Robert's work and life. Um, and if and when that happens, in the meanwhile, the community board is going to work on a proclamation for Robert to send to his family. We'll send around a form that you can share widely through the public that you can put, um, we're working on the questions to send out so we can do something really um, dynamic uh, in fitting with who Robert was, because I think it's very difficult to find one word to describe him. Um, and as I say, pictures say a thousand words and he had so many. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, already coming up with the business of the board. One of the things that we talked about, I'm really happy people are reporting and saying things. I'm starting on the right side of the screen this time. Um, 311 and 911, that goes for everything from the noise that you hear in the parking lot to the homeless people screaming to the vape stores, 311 complaints. We have the list of the only legal locations in lower Manhattan. If you don't have that list, the community board can share it with you. It is the list that we got from DCWP. There are no more tobacco licenses available in lower Manhattan. So any new store that you see opening is illegal, period. There's no buying. If Francis owned a store, I cannot buy her license. So anything that you see, please report it. Please copy the community board. We really, really, really appreciate that. The only way we're going to get ahead of things, NYPD keeps telling us report, report, report. So we're going back to the old fashioned see something, say something. Things that are in the works. Educational Alliance is going, has needed to postpone because of their change in leadership regarding what they're doing at Five World Trade. Uh, they're anticipated now to come most likely in January. Again, the tobacco retail licenses, Justine is working and walking the neighborhood, but help her out. File a report, let's get it going. We're keeping a list in the office and sharing with um, our elected representatives. Please note that the Sheriff's Department does see 311 and get it, and get the complaints, and DCW will come out and investigate and find people. So if the store's not on the list that we have, go ahead and report it. Um, BPCA is presenting the Northwest Battery Park City Resiliency. Again, this isn't a Battery Park City project. It starts at South Cove, goes all the way into Tribeca on North Moore Street. The public comment period due to aggressively pushing from the community board, the BPCA did ex and our electeds did extend the public comment period to the end of December, but it's still not enough when you come to a scoping meeting that transforms an not only an entire neighborhood, but goes into a second neighborhood. Um, and there has not been the robust dialogue on the west side that there started to be conceptually even on the north side because they linked the projects. So we're working to do the best we can. Please attend the first precinct meeting. And then these are the things that are coming up. Land use in December. DCP will start doing their outreach regarding zero carbon text amendment that is citywide. And uh, they wanted to come early to CP1 because apparently we have a lot of input. Uh, we are now virtual for the rest of the year through December. We will be hybrid starting in January. So I hope everyone has um, a little bit of a weight lifted off them, not knowing you don't have to ask, you don't have to think about it. December will be virtual. Um, and we are waiting to hear back on whether on the arch archeological, oh goodness gracious, I spelled that wrong, reports on 250 Water Street and the fines that were there to come to the community board, which should be super exciting. We are hoping that they will come in December or January. We've given them a whole bunch of um, dates. With that, I'm going to close my chair report and announce that our phenomenal uh, Manhattan Borough President is here and he'd like to say a few words. So welcome Borough President Levine. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, that kind introduction. Um, looks like my video is not playing. Is that right? Not sure why that is. I think um, I apologize for that technical glitch. You guys do might you have, have your camera covered? It looks like the I, lens I, is I fully covered. I do not, but uh, I think I'm having a WebEx challenge here. Uh, how annoying is it for me to do this without the video? Do you want me to take a minute to work this out and come back to you? Um, you know, 
I have heard from numerous board members they prefer to see your smiling face. Oh, so, that's very, very kind. Okay. Um, so if you want to figure that out, we can certainly move and do. Give, give, give me 60 seconds on that. Uh, so it. I'm going to pause. You do the next uh, person and I'll come back. All righty. Let's move right. to the next see slide. No worries. Um, I'm going to do the Governor's Island debrief, and then we're going to have a small um, toss up, and land use is going to go after me, and then Battery Park City. So that's going to kind of be the way we're going to roll tonight. Uh, I'm back, by the way, and I figured oh, it out. There you go. Then, Mark, you're on. I'm not totally inept technolo technologically, it turns out. It's wonderful to see you all, CB1. Um, I, I want to clarify one procedural matter, uh, Madam Chair. You said you are going vert, uh, you are going hybrid in January, even if the, there's another emergency order. Is the board determined that? We have the availability to go hybrid um, because it was passed in our bylaws. We're following the lead of your office. If the borough board is virtual, we will be virtual. Um, it's hard in the winter time because it's an indoor thing. We, I do think, and many board members have spoken up that they prefer. They like in person because it builds community and builds relationships and helps people understand perspectives. So when we're discussing things in a meeting, if, for example, Bruce and I don't agree on something, but we both had good points, we have an opportunity to discuss it after the meeting together or walking back to the bus or to the subway or to the neighborhood, that whole key of community board engagement or engagement with the public is missing at the moment. So it's a hard choice between what's happening. Quite frankly, this month it was a blessing, unbelievably, because I don't think we would have gotten the, there would have been no way we could have not gone virtual this month just because of the COVID outbreaks from the number of board members that I heard from. So we'll see, we'd like to go higher. Uh, uh, I understood. Um, the first question is whether you'll have the option, and that depends, of course, on whether there's another emergency order extension. These have been happening 30 days at a time. It's it's a challenge because uh, we have so much uncertainty. Um, the current order ex expires, I believe, on December 21st, so you're covered for the next month. Um, we just don't know whether there'll be a further extension, so it's certainly prudent for you to plan that the order expires. Uh, but we'll be monitoring it closely and let you know. Um, you've been uh, ahead of the curve in planning for the hybrid operating model. Kudos to you. Uh, in fact, I think other boards will learn from you. So uh, let, let's keep in touch in the weeks ahead on that. Um, we had a wonderful week of trainings for community board members and the general public, which many of you participated in. We had, I think, close to 700, uh, over 600 at, 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 for sure throughout our week of trainings and um, really felt great about the turnout and the feedback and the content. Um, many of you participated. If you missed uh, one or more trainings that you'd like to do, uh, don't despair. We're gonna be running another round of trainings in March of the coming year. And we are um, working to get um, video made available of the trainings that we just ran. Uh, not quite the same as being there live. But um, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as that's an option for you as well. Uh, a couple policy updates I wanted to share with you. We um, joined with uh, nine city council members in Manhattan, including uh, your wonderful local council member, uh, Chris Marte. Uh, and I forget whether uh, council member Rivera covers part of CB1 as well. Uh, it's all, all Chris Marte. Um, well, uh, council member Marte uh, joined us in our call for organics collection, uh, AKA composting to be offered to every building in the borough of Manhattan. Uh, we've, we are way behind on organics collection in New York City. Uh, that was true pre pandemic. We took a major hit when composting was canceled. Uh, it was a big mistake. Uh, we're trying to claw our way back. We are, are sending 8 million pounds a day of uh, organic material to, to landfills. Uh, it's creating methane gas. Uh, it's a driver of climate change. One third of our waste stream is organics. Queens now has uh, proven out a new model. Uh, in, in September, Department of Sanitation uh, allowed, uh, by default, every building in Queens now has organics pick up weekly. We want that for Manhattan. We want that for the whole city, but we want that for Manhattan. Um, 
relatively modest additional expense. It's part of the, the, the regular pickup routes. Uh, and uh, we're optimistic it's going to happen, but we're really trying to push it um, for the benefit of CB1 uh, and all boards across our borough. Um, uh, I understand there's been a uh, talk tonight, perhaps, on our proposal for Route 9A. Uh, is that right, Madam Chair? Or th did I misunderstand that? Um, no, so so, not tonight, but in general. Related. It's related. Mr. It's, ten, it's tangentially related. related. We have concerns about the bike lanes coming south of Chambers, as you well know, because of Battery Park City and the turns. So a bike lane on 9A south of Chambers has um, not been supported by Community Board 1, but a connection between the Brooklyn Bridge and the Greenway is highly supported. So Got we're 50-50 on, on 9A, but, you know, because there's a long way between Canal and Chambers, but south of Chambers was not supported. Got it. So um, you, you joined us, Madam Chair, and this board has been vocal on the plan that we have gotten behind, which is a Chamber Street to 59th Street uh, segment. Uh, there's a variety of reasons where we focused on that. I hear you on the south of Chambers piece. Uh, would love to put our heads together with you, maybe connect to some of our transportation policy folks to, to get your perspective on that. And uh, your your input there will matter a lot. Um, we have gotten uh, tremendous support uh, for our proposal north of Chambers. Uh, we're now in dialogue with State Department of Transportation. This is uh, the, the entity that has jurisdiction. Um, uh, it's, it's not a city DOT property. Uh, some people are surprised to learn. We'll keep you posted on that. Um, we're going to keep pushing and let's coordinate uh, on the South of Chambers piece. Um, a somewhat related policy that we've been advancing has to do with the explosion in e-commerce deliveries. Um, to give you the numbers, they're pretty stark. We're getting two and a half million packages every day delivered in the five boroughs, uh, e-commerce delivery. Uh, that's an, a, a huge increase relative to pre-pandemic when it was one and a half million. So look at that change just in, in less than three years. Uh, it's not going back. And it is really creating problems on our streets and sidewalks because of the trucks that are double parking for delivery, um, the bike lanes, the bus stops, the, the sidewalks that are being obstructed uh, sometimes by the trucks, but, but also increasingly by uh, essentially uh, fulfillment centers, which are popping up these, these mountains of packages, which are being sorted uh, right on the streets uh, and sidewalks. It's really creating problems. Uh, we need to do better and we have, uh, issued a, about a dozen policy recommendations that we think would help tackle this problem, um, including things like allowing the companies to use the ground floors of garages uh, to Mars. do that kind of processing and sorting. That's currently not allowed. It would require um, tech, actually a zoning tech. You're, yes. you're kind of stepping into a minefield I'm going to give you because we have a major issue right now concurrently with a garage that is allowing last mile delivery in an it's an open garage so the residential buildings that surround it are struggling because 20 you know all hours of the day and night it's loud noises and horns and they're and on the was, sidewalk was that, was that being done on the street uh is it, or is that like a surface parking situation or what what is that a surface parking and we're happy to uh get you more on after we have okay I would yeah, love it's, to talk about that. That's, CB1. that's a different it's, animal yeah. um, because I, I can see how the noise uh, would, would emanate and echo uh, and, and that could be a problem for people who live nearby. So uh, I would love to learn more about that and, and maybe I can help. What we're talking about are enclosed structures. Uh, so I don't think there'd be any noise. I think it would be a lot less noise than um, uh, in, the, if, in, in the status quo where um, it's done on the street and sidewalks. Uh, it, really, it really is disrupting life. So, um, uh, but but th this is a, it's a twelve point plan. I don't want to get into all of it now. But I would love your input as a board um, if you haven't yet, and it would be helpful for us to come present at your transportation committee um, or whatever relevant committee uh, where we could really set time to talk through uh, this policy. I would love that opportunity. Uh, it would come myself or at a minimum. We, we have some really good policy experts on this on staff. So I see at least one hand up from Bruce. So let's do it. Uh, that's great news. Um, we passed a bill in the city council a couple of weeks ago, uh, 
that I'm really excited about with a partner in the body, a uh, council member from Brooklyn, Rita Joseph, uh, to tackle the shortage of public bathrooms in New York. We're way behind other cities uh, of, the, of the nation and the world in number of public bathrooms per capita. This is a problem. I think we've all been caught out there, let's be honest. Uh, tourists, uh, anyone pretty much moving around the city has dealt with this. Uh, it's a public health problem. It is an equity issue. It's a quality of life issue. Uh, we've got to do better. So we passed a bill um, that would require the city to find one new location in every zip code for a new public bathroom. So equity is built in, right? You've got every zip code covered. Um, would love CB1's input on this. Uh, if you have ideas on, on how to solve this problem in the zip codes that you cover, we would love to get your input. We'd pass that on to the city. I think DOT is going to be leading this up. Um, but let, let's implement this right. Would, would, would really love your input on this. I think it's going to make this uh, a healthier uh, city uh, for all of us. So let, let, let's do it um, uh, to be sure. Um, so uh, one, one last thing is on the million trees. I understand you guys have a rezo on this. Is that right? Very good. Have yes. you actually passed yes, it Yes, we do. Uh, it'll be voted on this evening, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know I don't need to sell you on this because you've heard, but it's very rare that all the community boards in the city issue a resolution on a topic other than like a citywide zoning text amendment. Right. Uh, it's, so it's going to have a big impact uh, if we can get uh, boards around the, the city to do this. Uh, this is about our environment. It's about flood resiliency. It's about um, air quality. It's about cooling neighborhoods on hot days. It's about mental health. Uh, it touches all of it. So really glad this is going to make CV1 as usual in the vanguard. Uh, you're one of the first in the borough to do this. So thank you so much. Uh, my plug to vote yes tonight. Uh, I'm going to pause have, there, taking up a lot of your time. Um, I have four hands up for you, Mark, okay. if you don't mind. Happy to. Uh, Bruce had his hand first, so we'll go Bruce, and then we're going to go uh, Mariama Rosa Wendy. Oh, Bruce's hand went down. Bruce? Mariama, you're up next. I appreciate everything that you said and all of your endeavors and your initiatives. I just want to add that being a resident of Manhattan for over 50 years, so many initiatives get passed without infrastructure, whether it's zero vision uh, or, or the zero, you know, the, zero. Street, mm -hmm. the street becoming, in which case after it's all done with bike lanes and bus lanes and bump outs and curb pulls, there are more pedestrian deaths than there were before. I don't know how in a city of eight and a half million people you are going to do compost pickup without serious infrastructure. We're doing we're doing congestion pricing by dumping pollution and cars in the poorer neighborhoods in the Bronx and surrounding boroughs. We are there's so much electrification for cars, there's no infrastructure. So these bills get passed. I remember public toilets were a huge initiative. When I started on this board 21 years ago, and there were experimental public bathrooms in uh, City Hall Park and elsewhere, it all got scratched because just like the subway toilets that were closed over the years and the subway station public toilets that were closed, the the, the thought process is not iterated. Just the just the laws. Bruce, I appreciate your comment. First off, thank you for your kind words uh, and. You know, uh, elected officials have uh, a habit of celebrating and popping the champagne when they pass the bill or get the policy approved, uh, and and then they kind of go to sleep on implementation. And uh, you know, po policy policy lives and dies by good implementation. So um, you certainly have my commitment on the topics that that I've raised tonight and the additional ones that you raised. That I, I'm I'm not going to go to sleep. Uh, we care a lot about this being done and being done right. Uh, and in fact, I just spoke about uh, my thoughts on the bathroom bill. We're, 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 we're cheering the passage, but we're also already thinking about how to do it right. Uh, you have my commitment to be here to partner with you to get all this done. Uh, and pre appreciate your comments. Awesome. Mariana? Hi. Um, thank you for, for coming in, for allowing us to ask it's questions, as always. Um, 
I'm sure you've seen the, the the news reports and press conferences about the the gap, the shortfall in 9/11 healthcare funding. Yes. And getting behind the Zadroga bill. So last month, Community Board One um, passed a resolution asking this Congress to get it passed. Um, be, by the end of the year, which was something that Senator Schumer had expressed he wanted to do in either the omnibus bill or the defense bill. Uh, last week, CB2 passed a similar resolution, and I'm also aware of organizations in the neighborhood um, that are writing letters uh, of, of the same type. We'd like to see, when I say we, the 9-11 community, would like to see uh, as many of the impacted community boards as possible to pass a similar resolution. Um, of course, we, you know, we don't have a reach to Staten Island necessarily, but at least in lower Manhattan, it should be boards one, two, and three. And we've had a lot of trouble reaching board three uh, and getting this um, we would be happy to pass to help. something. Well, for, first okay. off, Mariam, I, I so appreciate your leadership on uh, more issues than I can count, but, but what you've done for the 9-11 survivor community is really, Extremely important. Uh, you certainly have my full support in this. Thank you, Mark. Um, on on the 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 uh, meeting tonight with us is is my wonderful uh, uh, deputy director of community affairs, Eric Cuello, and uh, so he'll he'll connect us to he'll he'll connect you to CB three. Um, Much appreciated. I you know I can also call um, Staten Island Borough President Vito Fasello, uh if that's helpful. To loop in. That would be helpful. As many people that are impacted that could pass, get behind a resolution okay. as possible. You, you, you got know, it. So, so the lame duck section just started last week, right on the 14th, and we have until December 31st to get it done. So we'll help you on CB3 and uh, and on on uh, the, the Staten Island Borough President. Thank you, so Thank you so much. You got it, Rosa. Thank you. Hello, Mark. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you do, of course, uh, as oh, always. Great to um, see you so composting, I love composting. And so thank you so much for tackling that because we used to have composting in our building. We fought and worked for it for a year and a half. We have over Terrible. 400 units in our building and generate insane amounts of compostables. And we have been so, um, well, I've personally been so distraught that we are not able to compost them. Uh, so, so that would be incredible. Um, the million trees, I like just <laughs> uh, love that, and we really, really need to do that. And I think that would be so incredible. We and we do have a resolution that um, talks about planter systems that may be more applicable to our neighborhood, given the infrastructural limitations right. of the streets. Right. Um, the other thing is, just want to say. A bathroom underneath the Brooklyn Bridge at Park Row, right where the stair yeah. exits are. I'm with you on that. 19,000 tourists a day, and that would be very, very welcome. And crying welcome. out for it. It's it's a <laughs> it's a it's a very compelling location. And uh, on that vein, I do want to thank you of your for your letter of support for that. Um, last mile delivery. I'm just going to toss this out there because I think I did toss it out at the transportation meeting. But 28 Liberty, which is directly across the street from the uh, Federal Reserve, actually has a loading bay, loading dock. Uh, the, they have about 500,000 square feet of below grade building space, and which could be an excellent opportunity to um, put into space, into use space that is not actively being utilized um, to its fullest and also get it off the street. And the only neighbor directly across the street that would notice the traffic going in and out would be the Federal Reserve, which, you know, I don't know. Do you know who owns, uh, you said it's 20. That's Liberty. owned by Fosun. Okay. Can you, could you maybe uh, put us in touch with them? I, yeah, I would uh, love to. I would okay. love to get if we, we can, can get it off our street and into a basement, I mean, that would be a win for everybody. So I would love to do that. Well, that, that's, that is, that's our vision. Uh, I don't know that location. Uh, I mean, I know where the building is, but I don't know about their. It used to be Chase but... Plaza. It's just. Uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. If you please connect it, connect us to them. Thank you. Okay. Rosa. Wendy and then Justine. Thank you. Uh, so many good points today. Um, and I wanted to just uh, about the 9 11 fund. I think uh, 
Mariama covered that, but I'm right in her camp in terms of my incredibly concerned of all the kids like mine who are just finding out that they're getting sick and, and uh, the funds may or may not be there in the future. So we really need to get that done. I wanted to, on a separate subject, um, applaud the extra training. I think it's all coming from a very good place. Um, you know, we went from having one hour of mandatory training to now three hours of mandatory training. And um, I just wanted to suggest, I mean, obviously we're all gonna do it, but um, I wanna suggest that you reach out. There are many, many companies out there that do this that you could, um, especially because there seemed to be a lot of um, difficulty with the technology. It wasn't an interactive session. It was a very stilted, your staff had to read um, a script and then you know people had to raise their hand awkwardly and it was just not a fluid meeting because there was obviously so many people on the line. I was just wondering if you could do something more flexible because um, there's some more vi virtual programs that companies use that I think would be better um, and then it would actually be easier to attend as well. So if you just explore that um, and along that along that um, slight criticism, I, I was somewhat alarmed that characters were named Beyonce and Madonna, that we were giving examples. <laughs> um, that was part of the script. Um, and as someone who used to do these types of programs in the past, I don't think I would choose such a thing. So I hate to always criticize, I hate to criticize, but um, I would just say there's, there's a lot of other programs out there that actually could probably be um, a little more flexible for people and probably get the same uh, thing covered. I appreciate the feedback, Wendy, and uh, we, we will take it to heart. Um, this is our, our our first round on this. We're really proud to have expanded the menu. Um, the sentiment uh, is definitely the right sentiment. I just don't know if you hit the mark. <laughs> which, which which was the training uh, that the, the Madonna and Beyonce example was in? It was the sexual harassment. Um, Got it. Okay. So uh, and it was just a little. And the hardest part is that I didn't, it wasn't very interactive. So, you know, I'm not going to say anything in the moment, but I, I don't think I was alone and going, hmm, you know, so. Okay. Uh, I wasn't <laughs> on for that part, uh, but. Um, it was in the script. It was, it didn't come up it. spontaneously. It was in okay. the script. I'll, I'll, we'll make sure that the, the staff gets that feedback and, uh, and we, we'll, we'll take your other suggestions. So. And, and there's interactive things out there that companies are doing, nonprofits are doing Wendy. that you could do anytime. Thank you. All right. Justine, your next and last. Yep, I'll be quick. Thank you, um, Manhattan Borough President. Um, this is wonderful. Thank you for everything you're doing. I also would reiterate, and I love the idea of connecting with Staten Island and asking those folks, especially in the North Shore, to be part of the 9-11 um, you know, funding um, push so we can get more people who are impacted covered. But what I also want to say is thank you in your office for the um, coat drive and the uh, clothing drive you did for the migrants you've been doing for the migrants. And I want to thank the folks that that uh, participated on our end. And I know that Morton Minsley, you did it with PS 150 and you got that going with your wife and, and the school, but um, also Battery Park City Cares and the Gateway Plaza Tenants Association. Um, I will sadly say that we stood outside and froze <laughs> as the cars kept coming back and forth to unload. And your staff is wonderful. And just a shout out for everybody. Oh, thank I want you. To thank you. We were, oh, we have been and continue to be overwhelmed by the generosity of New Yorkers. We've gotten thousands of pounds uh, dropped off at both of our office locations. We are, um, We've pivoted to, we are really focusing now on winter clothing, yes. uh, uh, almost exclusively with a few, a few other things, but um, we've just heard of such a shortage in that area for people from people who are coming from warm weather climates. And uh, so thank you for your continued leadership here in CB1. And, and, and I think that that's a beautiful place to end it, Mark, yeah. if you're good with that. I am and uh, grateful to have had time with all of you. Uh, to those of you observing, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy time with the family and uh, wishing everyone all the best. Thank you. You as well, Mark. All right. Let's pull up our agenda, get back on it. And instead of going to exec, I'm going to let Patrick Cannell from land use go first because he's a resolution and we can perk everybody up with that. And then after that, we're going to do ex uh, personnel exec and then battery park city. 
All right, so there you go. Yeah, I know I'm making you guys crazy tonight. Sorry. Let's do land use, not landmarks. Land use is, yeah, sorry about that. Do, 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 do. There we go. Land use. Patrick Cannell, you Thanks, are Tammy. going to be the first full vote. Remember for all board members, if you were not here for the roll call for minutes, when we call for a vote, you must say your name and your individual vote. Patrick, take it away. Thanks, Tammy. And thanks for the courtesy to go this time. Um, land use has one resolution. Uh, it's a section 195 um, application, which is um, an application where the city intends to a city agency intends to acquire office space. Um, the application goes through the Department of City Planning is referred out to the community board and the borough president and council for review. Uh, in this case, ACS, the Administration for Children's Services is moving from 150 William Street to 110 William Street, just a block away. Um, but it is a large move. They're going to cons consolidate 18 divisions into their main headquarters, 2,500 employees. And they're taking oh, uh, 25 and a half floors or over 80% of the building at 110 William Street. The move in and of itself wasn't really uh, a concern or problem for the committee. Um, ACS has always been a pretty good neighbor in the neighborhood uh, and you know, a, ch a chance to modernize and consolidate their facility sounds like a great idea. The issue uh, that the committee had, I had and some of the neighbors here on John Street have had uh, is around uh, the owner and management of 110 William Street, specifically their demolition and construction work when they have new neighbors coming in. So. Um, the thought uh, was for the city, basically, it, that it's got this moment in time where it has an enormous amount of buying power with this particular landlord uh, to really force a conversation around coordinating uh, better that, that construction and demolition to reduce the quality of life, the issues, the noise concerns and the health and safety concerns for the neighbors around there. Um, the committee also uh, expressed an opinion that um, while important in this one instance, it is emblematic of uh, construction coordination needs throughout the financial district. Uh, we all remember, or many of us may remember the Lower Manhattan Construction Command Center that was uh, shuttered uh, a number of years ago, 2013, I think. Uh, and CV1 has been on record calling for either the reinvigoration of that entity or some other kind of cord construction coordination um, entity. So that's what the resolution reflects. Um, and I will take anybody's questions. Patrick, I see no hands. So let's roll. Great. Call the question. Uh, second. So we're going to do this Mimi by affirmation. So we'll, we'll do it as we've done before, which means um, we're just going to call, uh, assuming everybody's a yay who has already um, signed on to vote from the first one. Are there any no's? Yes. Tammy, you wanted me to say my name and vote. It's Bruce Airman. Afro, uh, yes. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. Chow Z is yes. Thank you. Megan McHugh, yes. Thank you. Three. Are there any hearing no no's? Are there any abstentions? Are there any recusals? You said it was. Madam Chair, I was not there for the early call. Joseph Lerner, yes. Thank you, Mr. Lerner. Thanks, Mr. Lerner. Okay. There's one more member that is here now that wasn't earlier. And who would that be? Um, uh, Pandya. Yeah, Bushma. I need to get your vote uh, audibly for the record, please. So, Ushma, you have to have your camera on. Remember, everybody has to have their cameras on, no, uh, especially when you're voting. And you must say, Ushma, if you miss the first vote, the protocol is you say your full name and the vote. Okay, can you see me? Sorry, I'm with my kid, so I'm on. I can see you. Video yep. off. That's okay. Yeah? Okay. So, full Hi. name and vote, please. Sure, Ushma Pandya and in favor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank uh, you, Tammy. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Go happy Orange. Thanksgiving to you as well. 
Oh, Syracuse. Um, all righty. Um, I'm going to do really quick the Governor's Island RFP debrief. Um, we had a large discussion about it at the executive meeting for those who were able to come. We're going to put out the information that we have again um, with the board. We ask everyone to take a look and talk to your neighbors and friends, anybody who was available to be there so we can do a, a deeper dive and pass a resolution next month. Um, there are several of us who from the board who have gone. So if you need um, and are curious and want a better education on it and the resources that we have online publicly available are not enough, please check with um, Alice or Richard or myself or Betty Kay, I believe. Jeff Galloway went, and if anybody else has gone, Richard Corman's hands up. Um, anybody else? I think Gerald was there as well. Again, touch with them. Richard, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Tammy. Um, so at the meeting, at the presentation, they had um, materials that they took the took everybody through and those materials were um, sanitized such that you could not know which proposal came from which uh, bidder yeah. uh, which was fine which but i asked them if we could actually get copies of those materials because it's very difficult to remember all of what they presented and, it, and it's particularly if we're going to be uh, talking to other folks on the board about uh, about the presentation, those materials would be extremely useful, both as a refresher, but also to refer people to. I don't understand any reason why we can't get those materials as a community board, because there's nothing nothing in there that makes that I could see compromises any of the bidders because they're anonymous. So I would ask uh, you, Tammy, and or whoever is appropriate, to go back to uh, uh, Governor's Island Board and see if we can get those materials. Interestingly, Richard, believe it or not, I did ask twice. Ah. I'd be happy to ask a third time. But yes, and I'm going to ask our electeds to help us in that pursuit because the we were declined that opportunity. Don't I don't understand if they want us to um help you with the engagement, how 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 helpful problem. is it not having the information? That's a really Perfect. great question, isn't it? There you go. Exactly. All righty. I'm gonna put your hand down. Hearing seeing no other questions up. Um, let's move to personnel. And thank you, Richard. We'll be covered by Susan tonight. Susan Hi. Cole. Uh, you have a proposal in front of you uh, for uh, that the personnel committee approved. Elizabeth's not here, so I am uh, taking her place. Um, you can read it. it describes why we chose Onej. Um, we interviewed, we had three applicants, but one of them didn't show. And the other applicant in comparison to Onej did not have the experience. And uh, those of us who have worked with her feel very positive. And uh, we are, uh, we have to put the salary in. Um, that's the way it all works. It's in there for all of you to look at. And I'm proposing that we hire Onedge James as our community associate. And that's what the resolution says. So I would need a second. And okay. so um, I guess if we don't have any, uh, let, are there any recusals? Are there any nays? Are there any abstentions? So we can, oh, and last piece, we're hoping that she will come on full time on December 12th. We're looking to push it along. Um, so we can welcome Onedge James as our new community associate. Thank you, everybody. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Susan. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations, Onedge, you're stuck with us. Oops, I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. 
Yay. We're very fortunate. We all feel that way. Exactly. All right. Battery Park City Committee, Justine. Great. Thank you so much. I'll try to go this go through this quickly because we don't have any resolutions. Um, I love that. Yeah, right. So quick and simple. Um, so walks and runs in Battery Park City um, in 2023. Everybody knows that Wagner Park construction is allegedly starting. They've put the fences up. Um, so that's going to put an impact on some of the runs and walks through Battery Park City. The authority came. We had some discussion um, about parameters of what to look through. They presented some walks that they had already been received applications for, and we're going to keep the conversation going. I believe that they already approved three large walks and runs that have come through before. There's some multiple smaller walks, and the conversation is just going to continue. They're promising to be careful and um, be considerate of the neighborhood, but we're, they're going to have to change up some of the routes depending on the size of the um, run or walk and the location. All right, community priorities for the joint purpose fund. Um, so basically, Battery Park City's joint purpose fund is usually about 15 to 20 percent of the amount that the Battery Park City gives to the city of New York after the authority pays its operating expenses and debt servicing, the bond debt payments. In 2023, that amount is projected to be about $40 million. Um, the rest of it projected to be about $190 million goes to the city's general fund. What we were talking about is priorities for that fund. And I'm just going to give you the uh, uh, summary of what we discussed, uh, the topics we discussed, and we're going to talk about it further in the December meeting, maybe coming to a resolution. But we'd like the fund to go to affordable housing, which did not seem to be against what the authority wants it to go to or the city. Um, and affordable housing, top priority, um, centering on affordability both in Battery Park City and outside of Battery Park City. So we talked a little bit about NYCHA or low-income housing and repairs. We talked about sending a, a percentage of the funding um, annually to support more affordability, affordability if not 100% affordability, at five World Trade Center. 40 million is not enough for that, so that's why I say part of, not because I, don't, I am moving off of the 100% affordable housing at Five World Trade Center. We also talked about um, in Battery Park City, having um, whether it's a rebate or a percentage going back to the buildings to comply with local law 97 repairs or renovations, or to be pushed back to the residents and renters in Battery Park City who are low, moderate, middle income folks or, or uh, fixed income or seniors who are being forced out by the ground rent increases, the pilot increases, or the rent increases. Conversations, nothing was decided, and um, more to come on that. Um, if you've got something to say about it or have an opinion, try to come to our, our December 7th meeting. We'll talk further. Um, what else? Pataki at way activation report. So we talked about what well, the Pataki way is the walkway um, on the west side of the uh, west side highway bike path walkway, Little West Street, um, and it's between the park that they were speaking of is West Thames Street south down to the Battery. The reason why the authority brought that up as an option to activate that space was because of Wagner Park being closed for the construction and they wanted to give the community more spaces to go and open it up, whether it's for the children, uh, the schools or grown ups doing Zumba or doing uh, yoga or whatever. Um, so we talked about different things, um, members of the, of the committee. We went on a walk through with some folks from the authority and their South Res Resiliency um, uh, design team or project team, and we came up with some options and uh, preferences and just basically, once again, nothing's decided except to say that there's going to be no uh, permanent change or like construction change. The walkway will be there. It'll be used in between, but they're not going to touch the uh, tree beds or the, um, the planters. Um, they're looking about and paying attention to the fact that everything would be small, event specific, planned, uh, in a contained space. They're not looking at loud or amplified sound that's going to be disturbing to the buildings that are there because we've got two residential buildings as well as a school that are right there. Um, and there'd be no loss or movement of the city bike rack. And uh, what else? Uh, just two other things uh, that are short. Um, Folks had brought up some issues about the scaffolding around Brookfield Place and Liberty Street. Just to let people know, it's due to local law uh, 11, the periodic facade work. So that's why it's there. They kind of sprung it on us. Brookfield sprung it on the neighborhood 
quickly without warning so that people were concerned as to what it was. That's what it is. Um, just so you know, Nick gave me some information and he also talked about it, but I want to let folks know as of November 15th, the Battery Park City Authority is closing many of the parks for the annual seasonal uh, let the grass grow. So what they did say is they're keeping open access on Rockefeller North Lawn right now, Rector Park West Lawn and Teardrop Park Lawns, and they're going to move things around from there. And then of course, um, uh, the the asphalt turf at um, West Thames Park is always open, so that's always there. Um, and I think and with that, I, you're done. Yeah, I think I am done. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. I see no hands up, so let's rock and roll. Let's go. And Thank go you. Go to the next committee. Landmarks. Jason Friedman. Hello. Can you hear me? We can, but your camera needs to go on, Jason. Hmm. I'm putting it on. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, 17 Battery Place. Uh, we didn't actually vote on this uh, in in committee. Is that okay? How, how are we handling that? I wrote it uh, after because we all agreed that the, 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 the uh, you're, applicant. You're going to give a report now okay. on what went on in committee, and then I okay. believe that's the one that, is that the one that's in new business? Okay, no, good. It's not. Oh, Go. maybe it has to be, but I don't, I'm not a expert on that. Anyway, 17 battery place, which is an amazing building. 1 of the best buildings really. In the world, because it's a humongous and gorgeous building uh, in the harbor of New York. Um, they had been uh, someone has proposed, as you can see here. Um, some storefront infill only in the uh, right side uh, on the ground floor. And um, <clears throat> previously approved, we have uh, the middle bay by uh, and the middle and, and middle two bays by a, a firm called Fogarty Fingers. But this has been approved and installed. And then we have an original, well, not original, we have an existing bay all the way to the left. And um, unfortunately, what, what we've got here is, uh, you know, some bad planning by the owner of the building to do. You know, these, these uh, interventions in uh, different uh, styles and uh, different times. And it really uh, would have been better if someone just took like a holistic uh, ground floor. So what we are left with is a proposal that uh, all the way on the right, which I think anybody who's not even an expert can tell, uh, it, it really has barely any articulation, um, any kind of respect for, um, you know, details and that we would want to see on a building of this um, pedigree. So the committee agreed that we wanted them to come back and present something different with more, uh, you know, uh, more sensible design, uh, but they elected to just uh, Whenever it is tonight, we have uh, uh, something to vote on for a negative resolution, which recommends the Landmarks Commission deny their <clears throat> proposal for the right three windows at the ground floor of this building, 17 Battery Place. Um, also, after that, we just discussed um, the, how it was necessary to come together in some of the future landmarks meetings and discuss how we can uh, add to the list of protected buildings and neighborhoods in uh, lower Manhattan. I mean, everybody knows a large portion of our our community things in the 19th century and earlier and great examples of 20th century architecture. And, um, you know, I don't know which of community board one is part of a historic district, uh, but I think there's always a case for extending those districts, and so that's what we're going to look at um, together and try to um, also make some requests for evaluations based uh, through the process at Landmark. So if anybody has any special buildings that they feel, uh, you know, they know that are not Landmarks, and then you can go to the, the, the DOB website and, and any building that you put in the address on the DOE website, it says land. Yes, uh, under the property profile, then you'll know it's part of either a district or an individual landmark. If it says landmark, no, 
then it's outside of the uh, jurisdiction. So um, I know that a lot of people on here that have been on here a long time have really pushed along, you know, uh, enlarging our historic districts and doing all that. And we want to keep that uh, uh, here in the 2023. So we'll get into that as a committee. And that's it. Jason, did you guys do a resolution, a resolution for 17 battery in committee? No, I, I, uh, I wrote it after and sent it to, uh, Onej and, and I think, uh, Lucy was on there and, uh, okay. you know, if, if I, if we did, you know, if anyone checked the minutes, if we were someone to go back, we definitely did agree that. Uh, I would write a negative resolution um, if they did if they couldn't come back with something for us, and then I we got a message that they weren't going to come back with anything different. So, I proceeded with the resolution. If for some reason, I you don't know, that it was inappropriate. It's okay. I don't see it in the folder. It's which under new business, thing. Debbie. It, uh, is it? I believe so. Okay, so if it no, it's is under landmarks. Was it landmarks? Oh, it is under landmarks. I just I just didn't see it myself. So then let's take a vote on it. Um, you've already gone through the presentation. So Jason, you're you're on. Let's do call the question. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Susan Cole had a hand up. Susan, I just was going to say it was unanimous. We agreed that Jason should write it, and we uh, it was a. a, a there you are. I just wanted to reinforce that we, this wasn't arbitrary and capricious. Perfect. All right. Okay. With that note, Jason, call the question. Take the, take the vote. Okay. Uh, I second your call the question. So I'll roll. I'll second it. If I guess if we have to, right? Or there we go. So yeah. let's let's kind of roll along. Um, assuming there's nobody who has not already said that they're here, right, Mimi? We good? Yeah, I think we're good. We can do anyone opposed. Any abstentions or recusals? Passes. Hearing none passes unanimously and thank you, Jason. Have a lovely Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too. Sorry, because swore my lights are flickering. Okay, let's keep going. All right. So I'm up. You're up. Um, uh, we have a full agenda, but uh, the only thing I really want to say to people, we worked a lot on the 412 Greenwich and, um, and music going over the water and a variety of things. And uh, the, uh, the group appeared to agree with uh, what we had asked uh, asked for. And um, uh, I can't remember whether this is the one we had some trouble with bathrooms, but I think we're all we were all right. Um, and the only thing I want to note for everybody on our Tribeca financial, we can do it each at, uh, well, let's do Tribeca. So we have two resolutions, Tiny's Gumbo, uh, which sounds like a new kind of cool place. And they're going to have some jazz and music and the 412 uh, uh, Kuma Eats. And unless anybody had any um questions about these, uh, I would propose that we take them and, and approve them. Okay. So you're looking just so I can get it right for Mimi. We're going to take all of Tribeca together. Correct. Yeah, it's only two. And are you right. taking anything else with it? Uh, well, I'd like to take, uh, to get through it, the financial one, to let everybody know that this is uh, the Broad Street application is ping is for ping pong. And it is um, kind of sad on one level. It's the beautiful Bobby Vans. Uh, they're not going to use the first floor. It's all going to be downstairs. Um, I'm not sure what ultimately gonna, they're going to do with it. The hours are okay. Um, and uh, we approved it, but I wanted everybody to know it's going to be a ping pong place. So you could, they hope it to, to have families and a few events there and whatever. So people should know about that. So I would take those three all at once. Mimi, you said I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah, three that are on the screen. We can go ahead and vote on those. Okay, and for the record, um, Ujma has left for the vote. Okay. Okay. Francis, you have anything to add on those three? 
No. Okay. All um, right. So I'll second your your call for the for I the call question. For yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Amy, take it away. Second. Is anybody opposed? Any abstentions or recusals? Okay. Thank you, everybody. I, I, I want to, before I do the next ones, which are also all, all right, I think, um, uh, I want everybody to tell people that if there are complaints about hours or concerns or noise or people aren't, you can ask for the stipulations at the community board. Uh, if something is uh, uh, wrong, and this is as much for the larger community as our community, as our uh, board, call 311 issue a complaint, then call the community board and give us the number. It's our only way of going forward uh, with the SLA and whatever um, to uh, ensure that people comply with the stipulations. So please remember to do that. Um, all right, so the next one is the seaport. Um, uh, uh, we have 123. Uh, William, I would have put it in financial, but it's okay. It's the old Zaytuna, and it's going to be a dim sum place by dim sum palace. Um, and their hours seem to be fine by us. And um, uh, it's, it's not an, a big issue. And uh, they're all over the city. Uh, um, and uh, their hours are very reasonable and we approve them. Um, the next one was Water Street. Um, uh pizza place pardon me pizza place yeah and uh they're gonna have a little music and whatever else we try to keep the hours set up uh it's uh uh it was an existing place if i remember correctly and we didn't have any trouble with it they agreed to all the stipulations uh 33 Peck slip. Um, it was a retail permit for the legit hotel. Uh, again, it was not a problem. We now, if you see in your resolutions, if they have more than 75 people, we attach a large venue stip uh, 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 piece of uh, legislation that we passed as a, as a board that goes with it that have certain rules and regulations that they must comply with. And the final one was 83 uh, Maiden Lane was a, a change of method of operation and the owner was hilarious. Uh, we enjoyed him. He tried to get us to increase a little bit, but he was a good sport and we all agreed and wished him luck. Um, and then the final one, I think we might as well do it with that. Uh, uh, no, let's do that separate. I'd like to do that separate. So could we do the watermark, this? right? Yeah. Okay. So you have Mescali, Legit Hotel, 199, and 123, all four in the Seaport Civic, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And what a, but not a six point brewery for Battery Park City? Well, we could. Uh, I could. Uh, it's very exciting. They seem like a nice group of guys, and they're going to have a, uh, uh, an establishment which is going to be uh, it's huge, it's big, um, uh, a large venue, uh, with uh, where outs, uh, at 200 Liberty Street. Do you know where, where? at 200 Liberty, Liberty Street? Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. a big building with lots of frontage everywhere. Yeah, mad scientists brewing. Do we know where? Like, are they facing? The water side, are they facing the World Trade Center? Are they facing Vesey? I, you know, it's a very interesting question. They showed us a picture, and I am having a complete total blank. I think it was fa facing. Um, I don't think it was facing water. No, it was. I'll take not a peek. I'll take water. a peek at their their questionnaire, and, and I'll I'll get back to you all. Yeah. All right, so let's pass everything except for that, if you don't mind, Susan. I don't mind at all. Um, okay. And I, right. I don't have it in my notes. I'm very sorry. So could I call okay. a question? Yep. Second. All right. This is, this is for everything in the seaport area. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, is anyone opposed? Does anyone need to abstain or recuse? Thank you. Okay, now we're to Battery Park City with the question of location. Lucian's gonna is looking it up and gonna get back to us. Yeah. I mean, just so everybody knows, that's the one on South End Avenue. So it is right next door to a residential building. And so if it's facing South End Avenue with a yeah. outdoor sidewalk. It might be where Foxhounds was. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that that's where that's right the only the space it could be. Building. To answer your question, Jeff, the hours of operation, which are we thought were reasonable, were Sunday to Thursday, eleven thirty a.m. to ten p.m. Ten p.m. Ten p.m. Yeah, not looking well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, eleven thirty a.m. to eleven p.m. Friday and Saturday. So uh, even with the residential, we felt that we had, and they were very willing with those hours. They didn't have any trouble with that. Um, I, I only mention it because we do have some uh, indoor outdoor mm -hmm. cars in other parts of Brookfield that are quite loud just in the normal, because there's hundreds of people out there. It's not like it's blasting music necessarily, but, it, but they are it's people quite loud. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a quite a large um, restaurant retail space at 200 Liberty that's planned to be activated, including a lot facing West Street, facing the World Trade Center, as well as facing Liberty Street, yeah, our space. as well as facing Albany Street. So there's there's kind of an infinite possibility of where this could be. Um, I'm looking at this as kind of sideways to try to figure out where they're. Yeah, I, I, I am. Well, it, it looks I, like they may very well be facing uh, West Street and the World yeah. Trade Center. Uh, they are the, I thought. That is exactly where that is, Jeff. If you take a look. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, good, okay. that's yeah. a good spot for it. That's a good spot for it. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's facing West Street, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, hold on a sec. Here's I can't tell. So I it looks like the overpass was. is above it. You see? Yeah, so that is the space. That is, yeah, that's exactly where that is. If you it's see right where like, it says Liberty, yeah, that is the south east side of 200 Liberty, the brand new space that they carved out. Is that like where Obon Pan was? No, 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 it's the opposite oh, side mm. of the building. If oh, you look mm. at the top of this diagram, those doors up there, that's the doors that face Liberty Street. Okay. That you normally get in and out of, then go up the escalators there. Well, this is kind of enclosed inside the then. They have an outdoor yep. area that's underneath the um the bridge to um the, the yeah, park. that's underneath the bridge. The bridge and to goes over where the to, planters are. They intend to apply for an outdoor, you know, an out, yeah, outdoors right, the down the road, the, but right now showed that i mean that that's probably a very good space for it and will probably not disturb the residents hopefully they'll, hopefully. they'll have to come back if they're going to do anything outside um you want to apply for a sidewalk yeah. Yeah. they will not too. need to come back because everything they are going to do outside is actually not on public land it's private land oh that's oh. that's that's the reason why this uh, particular location <laughs> is private okay yeah, so they won't they won't be coming back to us. Well, but there are uh, one of the things that also uh, uh, they they made a good presentation, but also the hours were very reasonable, and yeah. like, you know that uh, we thought that that was acceptable. Great. All right. Any other questions from anybody else on Any the board? Any more depth? Anything? Eric, you has a question. Eric, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, liquor application for thirty three pack slip. It says in the resolution that it's uh, not closer than 200 feet. Was that verified? It, it, it's very close. I, I'm familiar with that area. Uh, it wasn't verified. Uh, I, I can tell you. Um, uh, so uh, we can check. Uh, we just have to change it. Uh, the applicant has represented that there are three or more establishments within a uh, premises uh, within 500 feet. So that's the, that's the ruling. 
they did right. tell us that. But can I go back to the other Eric and then come back to this? So we could take a vote. I mean, we can check uh, uh, whatever you want, but we did check uh, on the 500 foot ruling. I don't know what you're asking around the 200 foot one. Um, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is that true? And then if it's not, is, is, is that something that, that is a hard rule? The 200 foot rule is a, is a hard rule. Um, one it's peculiar because you measure from where the official entrance to the establishment is not the front of the building. So if the, if it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know this the, the exact case, but we've, we've seen this be complex when, you know, the restaurant is actually upstairs. And so you'd actually measure the distance to go down the stairs and then down the block to the front door, of whatever the school is. So that's something that you may have to take into account. Okay. And we can go look at it. I can walk over and look at it too, Eric. I don't have any trouble with that after Thanksgiving. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Um, uh, so, uh, could I have a vote on the uh, 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 Liberty I'll Street? Call the question. Second. Second. Okie dokie. Go on, Mimi. You do it. I like the way you do it. Okay. Is anyone opposed? Does anyone need to abstain or recuse? I'm abstaining just because I don't seem to have enough information. And because when I looked at their application, um, where they put that they were operating on the map that they give is different from the architectural rendering. So I'm abstaining. Okay. Apologies. Justine is also what, going to 200 Liberty. Yes. yes. And Justine's going to also abstain at 200 Liberty. All right. Yeah, we're case, only Bruce voting will, on 200 Liberty, by the way. In that case, Bruce Chairman will also abstain because I am uh, not in a suit. I don't have enough information. Do a roll call. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't, don't think, think so. You're good. No, I got Bob it. Schneck on the same grounds abstaining. Who? You and Bob ah. Schneck. Okay. All right. So, Tammy, Justine, uh, Bruce, and Bob. Bob, anyone else want to abstain? Forsberg will abstain. Aha, I found the photo. Sorry. Anyone else um, feel compelled to abstain? Okay. Can we see the photo? Yeah, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. I think Seeing this photo, photo would be helpful. Thank you. If uh, you found something. I found, I found a photo. Let's see how I can. Um, I can actually share my screen. Let's hope this works. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, yeah, if you see all my personal crap, I'll be apologetic. Um, I didn't rotate it, so just take a look um, at the photo. Do you see where that is? Do you see the stairs here, a handicapped entrance? And this is the, um, overpass this is actually west street so this side of the outdoor dining that we're proposing is actually on west street itself it should be fine if it's on so west in that case now knowing that i'm changing my vote and i apologize yes. i'm gonna say yes yeah this is consistent with what they what we saw a moment yeah. ago yes just a different angle does anyone else yes. want to change their vote so yeah far? bruce will change his vote okay bruce sorry about that no, Thank you for the picture, uh, Tammy Forsberg will change his vote too. Okay, yeah. so Forsberg. No, I'm not going to change mine, so but yes. that's okay. So okay. just I'm still Schneck abstaining. Too. Okay. Uh, Schneck, are you changing or are you not? Yes, changing. Changing. Okay. okay. So Thank Justine you. is the only abstention. That's right. okay. Lucian, you have your hand up. I think. Oh, I can wait for the votes to be over. It's okay. Okay. It's not, I think we're good. Motion passes, and I really appreciate. Um, I think that my bad that I didn't look at this and I apologize as chair and say, Hey, I think we should use more photos on this 1. Because it is a very complicated, um, district so in area. when you get our, uh, uh, my only suggestion is everybody, when you get the, li uh, the licensing agenda that is in your neighborhood. Look at it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Go outside and take a walk. You're right. Go take a walk. Okay. 
Eric. Thank you. Eric, you, um, I just did an unofficial distance and it's, uh, 289 feet. For a 33 back slip to the back slip school. Okay, thank you. Welcome. All right. With that, thank you, Susan, very much. Um, have a lovely Thanksgiving. Moving on to Alice Blank, Susan environmental. Water and water? after after Alice, I have one, two, three committees and new business. I'm sorry. Thank you, Alice. Sure. Uh, okay. Good evening, all. So we'll start with the resolution. I don't know, Lucia, if you're going to be putting that up because um, I'm not sure if anyone saw it yet. But it's a consideration for the extension. Yeah. The timeline for comments for the United States Army Corps of Engineers Harbor and Tributaries Focus Study it was presented by Kate Boycart um, from the Environmental Defense Fund. Uh, the committee reviewed two letters signed by over 20 city and state environmental groups asking for an extension to the comment period on the HAT study, currently to end on January 6. There have been three public meetings on the plan in New York City. The letter highlights the acute need for additional time for a project that has a reach of over 20 million people that spans two states and New York City. So um, the committee uh, unanimously agreed. I have to thank Lucian tremendously for a great resolution um, that I think encompasses everything we discussed. Um, and uh, I think maybe just, yeah, uh, to review the so you're basically supporting an extension of time um, only insofar as up to the congressional uh, appropriations in 2024, as it's stated in the therefore be it resolved. In other words, there is concern by members of, uh, the, of the board, of course, that things move forward quickly with resiliency and that this should not hold anything up. We were assured, of course, this would not. <clears throat> and obviously there needs to be a great deal more information provided locally as to what these Army Corps plans are. This is, of course, dealing with the entire west side of lower Manhattan. <clears throat> and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so Alice, the only hand I see up is Lucian's. Okay. Lucian. Nope. I accidentally left that up. That's okay. Fine. So could we get a vote on this? Mimi, take it away. I second it. Thanks. Uh, is anyone opposed? Does anyone want to abstain or accuse themselves? Okay. Thanks. So we had uh, the second uh, item on the agenda was a review of the interim flood protection measures for the west side of Community District 1 by Susan Rosen from the Office of Emergency Management. Um, you might recall they had come to us as part of the Lower Manhattan Coast Resiliency Quarterly Update, which was a very brief update on these measures, which unfortunately we learned um, do not exist. Um, just remind you, interior flood pressures are HESCO barriers, deployable gates, and tiger dams. Um, these are interim, obviously, meaning that they would not withstand large storms, but they're put up for 15-year events. Um, so, I think we have a couple of slides just showing wh where the alignment is that was studied. So, the, <clears throat> the Office of Emergency Management did a Tribeca feasibility analysis because, of course, we, we pushed it for many years to have the west side protected somewhat. Um, I'm not sure if we have a slide on that, but not a problem. Um, yeah. Oh, they're just going to boot that back up. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Um, in any case, uh, Basically, the, the, there was this analysis. Um, there was very little information, even though I had asked for plans from the DEP. They said they couldn't provide them, but um, uh, there were. Uh, you can okay. There we go. So that's it. That's the alignment. That black line, which was the potential alignment going well north of our community board all the way to Chamber Street. Um, next slide. So, this was the area that we were looking at specifically um, in the Tribeca area. And basically, if you, you can sort of read what we're, why they say that the analysis isn't, that the analysis was providing information that didn't allow for the, that we could have uh, flood protection. Um, and they basically indicated that the barriers were not worth the cost um, given the limited number of buildings that would be affected and the impacts that would have, would have been involved in the closing down of the West Side Highway were two re reasons cited. So the next side kind of zeroes in 
on the buildings uh, themselves, you'll see the very few buildings that are affected. And so the idea is buildings that were built after 1984 are covered in, in so far as being more contemporary buildings that have to deal with code that deals with resiliency measures. Though there were very few that were built before. And um, so basically the numbers didn't allow for them to go forward with these plans. And so that leaves us in a very precarious position. A lot of people have great concern, um, understandably, given that we're not going to see plans for supposedly on the west side until 2044. And that's if the Army Corps gets the $52 billion, which they don't currently have. So I think we really have to make an effort on this board to work closely with the mayor's office of environment, environment justice uh, to really talk about the west side of Manhattan and what we can do together with the state, the city, and the federal agencies involved to really start to talk about that a little bit more um, emphatically. Um, so that's it for that. I don't know if there's any questions on that. It wasn't particularly good news, but it was helpful. Anything there, Tammy? I don't see anything. I had my hand raised. Just a quick one. Just, so I'm sorry, just yeah, I can't sorry, okay. there, And I yeah. really one second. That's not long. Um, just so they're not going to do anything. They're not going to protect. I see four buildings. Fifth. Uh, then they they talk about was it twenty two residential units? Oh, units, not buildings. Right. You know, if you can, is there another slide there, Onej? Because there was one that zero. Yeah, there we go. So that zeroes in. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, it shows you so the there ones you can see that. Yeah. So yeah. The, the green ones are the measures in place. Those built before. So the two little pink squares are the only ones that are built before 84. Got so, it. Yeah. So the, That's uh, horrifying. And, and, the, and the purple um, is where a 15 year flood would go. So they're also That's where the water would go. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Anybody else on there, Tammy? Okay. So I'm going to move on. The last, uh, the, the third and last item on our agenda was the Wagner Park as a lens for future resilience projects. The presentation was provided by the original designers of Wagner Park, Lucinda Sanders from Olin Studio and Jeffrey Burchard from Machado and Silvetti. And some of you may know Olin Studio has a long history of designing in our neighbors as part of the team of designers that designed Battery Park City's master plan and the Battery Park City Esplanade in Pier 26. And as many of you may know, these are the designers who recently provided the presentation of an alternative resiliency plan for Wagner Park that was presented to the general public and to our elected officials, community board leadership, and the Battery Park City Authority last month. The Battery Park City Authority confirmed that it is not considering the alternative, and Wagner Park, as Justine has pointed out, is now closed and demolition is to begin shortly. The designers, designers made clear during the presentation that they were not advocating for postponing or stopping the current plan to demolish and rebuild the park during the presentation. Repeated. Uh, the presentation, which is available on YouTube, covered the history of the park and pavilion, a description of the climate science that informed the park's design, which included a very interesting video showing flooding and future sea level rise in South Battery Park, a description of the existing park's resiliency measures and materials, a review of parts of the alternative design, which the designers believe would be helpful to inform the community's future review of Battery Park Resiliency Park plans, the upcoming EIS, Environmental Impact Statement, with a particular eye to how to approach Rockefeller Park. The presentation was not 100% well received. A few board members felt too much time was spent presenting the history of the park and pavilion, opening and wounds. Uh, of the six years the community board has worked on this project and that the presentation was not direct enough as it, to its recommendations for the future. For others, the presentation was considered highly informative. For me, it presented a tribute of sorts to the park and its designer as we bid the park a chip. The designers provided a number of helpful ideas they urged the community to, to keep in mind during our future park resiliency reviews and discussions, including that the community should assure that all resiliency plans align with the city and community stated resiliency goals, that all alternatives that are presented in the EIS be reviewed in great detail. The designers pointed out that it is in the EIS process that these alternatives are presented schematically and often negatively, and that we should insist that all alternatives all our tentatives are clearly and fully documented and understood before selecting one approach 
over another. And this will, of course, see, we saw this in the Bruno Bates jails, we'll see it on Governor's Island. Alternatives are, we really need more information. Uh, the designers noted that the exposed, exposed flood barrier walls, which will likely be part of the designs in the Battery Park City area going forward, should be understood as potential design elements with aesthetic solutions and have the advantage of being heightened in future years. They also pointed out the importance of keeping in mind the history and cultural significance of any site in making our decisions. And lastly, the designer cited the critical need for a full accounting of the impacts any project has on the city's carbon footprint. The board will soon review the city's zero carbon text amendment and legislation on this issue, which is something I'm looking forward to working on in EPC in 2023. That's it. I'm happy to entertain questions and I wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and a huge congratulations to Onej. Delighted to have you um, on the staff. That's it. Thank you. Wow. Um, lots of information. Thank you very much. It was a deep meeting. Um, this, I don't see any hands on, so let's move along and happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Moving on to the next committee. Thank you, Pat Moore. And if, is Pat with us? I'm here. Hi, Pat. Hi. <laughs> so I'm really going to turn. I'm just going to one short discussion that we had was with the uh, Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, which was formerly known as the Department of Consumer Affairs, and it was about um, an establishment, a tobacco establishment in Battery Place that people had called in complaints about that they evidently were selling flavored tobacco, and that is illegal. So that uh, they had 20 violations that were issued against them and ultimately the sheriff's office, we were told, seized their goods. Uh, I'm going to turn the meeting over or the, we have a resolution about World Trade Center number five and I'm gonna turn that over to Mariama. Lucian, can you let Jill in so that she and Mariama can present the resolution? And by the way, the public safety updates didn't happen. The our officers from uh, precinct number one were not able to come and attend the meeting this month. Hopefully, they'll be there next month. Justine, is, hold on, you yeah. got hands up. Justine uh, first, and then Bruce. Thank you. Sorry yeah, about the tobacco sales one. Not jumping on the other one. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I guess I wanted to just get. Um, I apologize for missing the meeting last night um, or the other night. I was. We'll punish you. Yeah, I don't know where I was, but I was someplace. <laughs> I was someplace. There was a good reason why I missed it. But um, anyway, sorry. Um, but my question was: so they did actually seize all the flavored toba um, tobacco products That's what we were that are talking. not Juul, because I was in there, and they've got other products that are not Juul. So that that is not legal to sell anything at this point. That's flavored. That's what we were told, okay, except for mentholated, which is being discussed. Menthol, right, at this point. Right. Interesting because uh, Tammy and Lucian, every single one of those 20 something uh, stores that I found, and I have to add one more on Greenwich Street now, Greenwich yep. and something just opened up. Um, they all sell uh, flavored, flavored main mm -hmm. products. It's all a problem. Them. Yeah. And so it's, it's um, everyone needs to be reported to 311. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to, so they can be investigated and, uh, every, you know. Now, thank you. Thank you for that. Sorry to slow down the conversation. Yeah, just I mean, check out the YouTube video. Yeah, part Maybe. of the problem yes. is even when you look and Pat and Mariama know this probably from the report and Justine knows this, um, what happened on the location in Battery Park City was um, they had all the flavored vape products up, but then they also had illegally um, operated cannabis sales that were behind the counter hidden. And that is not. Yes, yes. And that's that found yeah. from the sheriff's raid. So yeah. It's, yeah. It, it really is important to have both the documentation to 311 and to the community board because we're reporting to the sheriff's, the office, sheriff's office as we're going, as we're going along. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Justine. Justine Bru uh, Bru I see Bruce uh, and I see Morton's hands up. Bruce? A quick, a quick question. Um, the department, you said it very quickly, the Department of Consumer right. Affairs is now called what? The Department DC. of Consumer and Worker Protection. Right. DC. The Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. I see. Right. Thank Consumer you. Consumer and Worker Protection. DCWA. I did that. It was Consumer Affairs. It's now Consumer and Worker Protection. Yep. Morton. 
Can you hear me? Um, hello? Morton. Yes, we can hear you, Morton. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, I, I uh, have heard some uh, complaints. Uh, I don't know if they if exactly what uh, they're doing there, but I heard some complaints addressed uh, about P at PS 150 about the new uh, 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 tobacco store, vape store that opened on Greenwich Street. Uh, so I know that people were concerned about the one in Battery Park City. Uh, they're concerned about uh, uh, the uh, the one on Greenwich Street and also the ubiquity of uh, a lot of these places opening, and particularly near school grounds. I don't have a lot of information right uh, now. Uh, well, I got it. Greenwich and Rector, yeah, right, you, Morton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and we I, and we asked about if there's some regulation about what the distance is from schools, and there isn't any. So there is no regulation that you know, like the two hundred foot rule. Without you know, no, there isn't any any regulation. But the regulation is that they aren't supposed to be selling any tobacco that would be attractive to to, to the youngsters. Number one, and number two, there's a legal age to buy tobacco. Period. And somebody said earlier that there's a a, a strict number of places that are licensed. So if some places, yeah, so there are no more licenses available. But there will be licenses. To become available shortly for cannabis stores. So we are over the legal cap for retail licenses for tobacco sales. So that not only can there not be any new licenses added, but every time one store closes, they are not renewing or selling that license or giving it to anyone else because our district is above the cap line. And there were people that were grandfathered in, but one that doesn't mean you're grandfathered forever. If you sell what? your if you sell your establishment or close your establishment, your license doesn't transfer to anyone else. Correct. Correct. All righty, Morton. Yeah, well, just continue to monitor the situation and listen to people in in the yeah, and call have people call three one one if they see a problem. Yeah, uh, Morton. I think that there's there's many agencies at play here. Um, the the Department of Consumer Worker Protection. Certainly is going to be one of the fastest responses. Um, NYPD has shown to be uh, very interested in going in and, and, and being a touch point to these stores as well. But also, we've seen that the New York City Sheriff um, has been also active on this front. And I think that's because of the uh, urging of the first precinct, is my, um, is my uh, theory, because the DCWP said it likely wasn't them who, who got them on the job. So, um, there's going to be a, there's a lot of different actors here, but as always, if you identify an establishment that is uh, illegally selling tobacco products, call three one one, get the service number, pass it to me, and then I'll make sure that all of them uh, uh, get the message so we can get them shut down. Well, I, I will definitely pass it pass along the information to the uh, people who uh, raise these concerns to me, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you. That's right. Thanks Thanks for the complaint numbers. Okay. So when so you're moving when to, you're the moving to the next resolution, Mariama is going to present. Remember, everybody's camera has to be on for a legal vote. Um, and if Mariama can present just Mariama, then that's great because she's our co chair. So I, I can't really prefer that. Jill really steered this one. Um, and did the majority of the research on it, but I'm I'm happy to present it if, if you don't want to move her over into the panelists. I can move her over here. the panelists, but it really does need to be you who who runs it and and chairs it. If you're unsure and you need to rely on her as a source of information from the public, that's fine. But you need to be the one to run it and chair it. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So. We're putting forth a resolution here um, with regard to the general project plan that is to be voted on by the LMDC and Port Authority at some time in December. We weren't given an exact date. Um, it's problematic because what it would do is lock in uh, the um, proposals basically by um, uh, Silverstein, Brookfield, and Omni all the way down to like their design specifications and things that would disallow an opportunity for not only 100% affordability or increased affordability, but a larger public space, 
Um, there are a number of, of questions that the community board has asked of the LMDC and of the Port Authority and of ESD that we've never received a response on. They went ahead and passed um, uh, and, and, and put out, did a public hearing and public comment period um, prior, you know, that may or may not have, um, you know, serious, but it, it, it seemed it seemed at least uh, sort of disingenuous because it was during the high um, Jewish holidays, and now they're again planning to vote in December during you know amid the uh, I don't know maybe the Jewish holidays again with Hanukkah, um, but certainly the, the Christian holidays and, and Christmas. So people are you know are not available to vote, and that. In this way, they would go ahead and be able to to pass um, what it is they're wanting to pass, which is changes to the general project plan that again would um, sort of lock in the rounded glass, the 10,000 square foot community space, as opposed to the 20,000 square foot community space that the that the community has asked for um, with with the increased uh, pricing and cost of their design specifications that would of course um, prevent any further affordability in terms of the the units the apartments and so they would just be getting exactly what they wanted and we the community would be getting nothing that we asked for uh in addition to that there was something else um Money Jill, what am I forgetting? Yeah. There's something else. Yeah, to say. Uh, a couple things. Uh, the LMDC uh, mm -hmm. closing and the disbursement of uh, their funds. Um, I would, uh, which they can basically give. Yes. We've heard rumors to the extent they could give them to the Performing Arts Center or the private museum there on the site. We'd like that to go to affordable housing. Uh, I think the the other part is that they never presented these these uh, items they're voting on which would lock in all of these issues they were never presented or discussed with the with the board and there's a lot in there we don't understand or or it's hard to understand including the right to turn it into condos um i think yeah. that uh, thank probably you, covers it Thank you. We, we've heard anywhere from uh, between 130 million to 160 million dollars remaining um, with the LMDC. They've never clarified, um, you know, the, the amount and given us a definitive amount that they have left. They just have confirmed that, yes, we do have money left over. The original mandate calls for affordable housing. Um, particularly in this area, right? It was the, the LMDC was established to rebuild lower Manhattan after 9-11. They have not created any of that affordable housing. So they would be closing without ever having filled that portion of the mandate, um, which it, which would be just pretty disgusting. Um, and when, when we, uh, when they do close, when they do dispense the rest of their money, we feel that the community board and the, you know, the community at large that should have some say in at least to make a recommendation as to where that money goes. And we feel it should go to affordable housing. Right. But so at least that's the, the resolution. Affordable yeah, housing and our community. Board. Right. right. Exactly. Community board to, to be able. The one thing I would add that's not even in this reso is that the city councils just voted uh, to approve uh, the Innovation Queens, which is also a Silverstein development, and that is going to be there's over 3,000 units of affordable housing. It's going to be 45% affordable housing, 45%, and we are still stuck in this 25%. But Silverstein did go up to 45% on this other development. Right. The understanding is that development started at 25 too, and their community was yeah. persistent as ours plans to be, and they achieved 45%. So not a hundred. And there's still people like commenting. I've seen on social media and stuff I've seen already. You know, there's no reason why it should be less than a hundred, and I would agree with that. But they were able to accomplish an increase over there, and I feel that we can accomplish an increase over here. Um, so we're going to keep on. Um, you know, I, I hope we can. I they have getting one at it. benefit that we do not. They had legis they had city council vote uh, mm -hmm. pressure, I think is the right way right. to put it, because it was a unit yeah. action. Um, it had to be approved and it went back and forth. There was a lot of um, media around that and a lot of voices and it was a, you know, a good compromise. 
is one that everyone was unhappy, but they were unhappy, but they made movement. And that's been the unfortunate part is that we as a public and our elected officials have not had the ability to put our thumb down on Empire State Development, much like we don't with EDC. Right. So with that, 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 that is the major difference that this one is state and that one was city. And so um, there was a there was a greater um, opportunity for the public and, and members of the city to, to comment. But the, the good news here, maybe, um, at least in that regard, is that the LMDC board is half, 50% is appointed by the city, is appointed by the mayor. Um, the other 50 is appointed by the state, by the governor. So we should have some, some entree there. And city planning also has to weigh in. In fact, they have begun to weigh in. Um, and in, in, in their testimony, in their response to ESD, said themselves that they wanted to maximize affordability. They wanted more than 25%. Um, affordable. So that was city planning. That's basically the city. That's basically the mayor saying it. But Mariama, I, I read in the yeah. paper today, it was Councilwoman, uh, I think Tammy was referring to it, Councilwoman Juan, she was yes. trying to go for 55% and so she was not approving it. And then after the negotiations, when they got at least up to 45%, then she approved it at the last minute. And that, exactly. so that was, that's what happened with that. Exactly. I'm going to think right, Jeff Galloway has his hand. Let, oh. Let's get to questions. Jeff Galloway has his hand up and then after Jeff comes Jess. Okay. Jeff? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, th the only point that I wanted to make is that, you know, we, we've had a lot of discussion of the percentage of affordable units, 25%, 100%, 45%, whatever. I, I think equally important is that the affordable units need to actually be livable units. We've seen a pattern in 421A developments where the affordable units are little coffin sized apartments or have a poor door or mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in some other way are nothing like the units in the same building uh, that's being um, you know, developed. And um, it, it's, it's 1 thing that maybe they don't have the same architectural finishes, although I think I object to differences there as well. But it's another thing that if the unit, the studios are 250 square feet and the 1 bedrooms are 400 square feet, um, and the 2 bedrooms are 600 square feet such that nobody would ever want to live in those units long term because they are. And I'm just throwing out some random numbers, but these are the, the, the reality of some of the ones that I've seen and had friends consider moving into were simply not livable units. They're the kind of place you'd move into because nothing else was available, but as soon as you found someplace else, you would move there. Um, and so I would propose that for things like five, any project that has a proportion that's supposedly affordable, that all of the units be indistinguishable from one another. That if there's a two bedroom and they should be assigned randomly, you know, so let's say you have 22 bedrooms in the complex and a quarter of them are supposed to be affordable, then that one quarter of the units should be just randomly picked from the two bedroom units so that you have basically these affordable units are actually decent places to live. So that's my basic point is that we should also focus on the actual livability of the units that are being offered as affordable. Um, and uh, because otherwise 25% of nothing is, is, is nothing. Uh, it should be 25% yeah. of livable no. units. That, that's true. Totally agree. Have... I don't know if there's any way to put that given the topic, but you know, I would be. Yeah, it perhaps to doesn't accept, go in this resolution. Accepting a friendly amendment, if there's a way to squeeze that in, you know, I totally agree with you. Okay. Let me yeah, I'm not necessarily we can, suggesting we can, resolution. We can work that as a friendly amendment based on exactly what Jeff has said. If you've accepted that, then I'm then I'm fine with that. Accepted. Here, here's what I'm going to say. Oh, Jill, I'm sorry, I didn't need to interrupt. Did accepted interrupt? and moved on. Let's go to Jess and then Bruce. Yeah, so I, I just want to bring up like this is. You know, there's sort of competing interests here because on the 1 hand, like, I totally agree with the sentiment here that we should be keeping up this fight. 25% is too low. We should be fighting for more. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it seems like. Every time there's a new de housing development, it's like almost impossible to build new housing 
um, in this district in particular, and I, and I don't want to be part of putting up further delay. So my question is just what is the, the vision for what happens after this? Opening up the comment period is one thing, presenting the community board. What is the end game here? Um, when can we get to a point where we're actually, you know, on the side of, of more housing? Because the, the, the fact of the matter is it's, it's, it might not be perfect. Um, but at the end of the day, this, the, the housing situation in this district has gotten so absurd that, um, you know, we need affordable units. We also need market units. We need to start building housing and, and I don't want to be on the side of just putting up more delay. So while I support what you're doing here, my question is just, what is, what do you envision for the end game? What comes next? Mary Alma. I, I, I actually don't know what you mean about getting on the side of housing. Um, what's been proposed is 300, you know, affordable units and the, the community welcomes those and is happy to have them. But what we're advocating for is 1200 affordable units. So I think that's already on the side of housing um, and we're not looking to delay the project. In fact, the developers don't expect any more movement until the first quarter of next year. So by asking them to expend, extend the public comment period beyond um, the the holidays, I, I think is fair. I don't, I don't think that that's a delay. So okay. I, I guess I that's disagree fair. with the that's question. Fair. And just one, one, other, one other thing is um tiny thing. Um, can we change? High holidays to high holy days. I think that's uh, more correct, but just putting that out there. Thank yeah. you. In the, in the resolution? Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. terminal. Yeah. I accept All that. Right. That's my accepting error. Okay. Uh, Bruce, you're next. Thank you, Jess. Yeah. So, first of all, to, to respond to Jess, I don't know what data you have, Jess, to suggest that, that there is no housing uh, starts in our community board district. There are Literally, I would say 1500 market rate units coming online or online from 1 Wall Street to 125 Greenwich Street, which is back on track. Those two alone are about 500 uh, market rate units coming online. There will be a surfeit of market rate units that won't all get absorbed for two or three years coming online. So that I, I would respond that way to you, and believe me, for better or for worse, I rep, I have represented probably thirty five developments in the last uh, thirty years. Number two, uh, as for Jeff, I agree with him a hundred percent, and I am left to my own devices. I would say I'm a social democrat, but it is pure utopia to write into a resolution that a Building a developer expects to get, let's say, $2,500 a square foot for per unit can possibly equal or, or even build exactly replicable units that go at an affordable rate. It's, it, it, it's an economic impossibility. I wish it were different. I wish it were the LaGuardia administration getting tons of money from FDR to build public housing. Number three, to me, the issue is really making whatever is put on as affordable housing affordable. The threshold levels for affordable housing are so high that I know of a development which had 25% affordable rental housing that was acceptable to the city at such a high threshold that half of them went back to market rate housing, which is allowable after a certain point. If not enough people take or, or, or enter or agree to a lot of people were in the lottery, but when they found out how much it cost, they cost. couldn't do it. And that those units referred to a uh, reverted to market rate. To market so rate. to me, the so issue to me. is real affordability, not the size of the unit or, or you know, those other issues. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank oh. you, Bob, Richard Corman. Uh, Justine, and I'm going to warn everybody, if something's been said, please don't repeat it. It's a friendly amendment. Please be ready with it. It is 936. Thank you so much, Bob Schneck. And all friendly amendment, please, uh, if it's accepted, please send me the text. Uh, that way I get it very accurately. Bob. Okay. I just wanted to say. Uh, really. Uh, the Silverstein uh, 
Silverstein proposal is the opposite of what the community needs to follow on uh, what Bruce said. We're clearly overbuilt with market rate houses, with market houses, and it should be clear to everyone who lives here that we have a uh, a real rental affordability crisis. So those this this is the in something that's as overbuilt as our part of the world. This is one of the very, very rare opportunities to one, make a statement about the World Trade Center and make a statement about the needs of the community and actually fulfill them. So I felt like um, I'm wondering, I, I really saw some a heavy push in this at the beginning and I was really hoping for a much stronger finish. So I don't see the electeds at the end of this. And I real I remember that there was a part where um, where there was an opportunity to get funding for this to see to find different kinds of different kinds of mechanisms that might fund affordable 100% affordable housing. But this is really an important opportunity, something that that in a community's lifetime only comes up once in a once in in many blue moons. Once. We really. Mm -hmm really should put something together that's 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 spectacular and is built to win. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Oops. Muted myself. Thank you, Bob, Richard, Justine, Susan. Uh, yeah, I, I did want to res I wanted a response from Mariama on that though. Oh. That was kind well, of a question. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so so what was the last part of the question again? The, this I didn't last hear part. a question, Bob. You said it I didn't, was a personal yeah. opinion, so I didn't hear a question about the strong the finish. Is that what I, you wanted to answer on? Is is what kind of really kind of support other than the community board and our votes have you put together? What kind of force of the electeds and other kind of powerful interests are are kind of behind this. And I remember that there was an opportunity that that the agency said if there was a way to fund this and we had explored ways to fund it and could come through with those, then they would really more seriously consider it. Those are my two questions. Do we have more influential push behind it? And two, um, and two, did we find any ways to fund this either federally or in okay, so any the question other is way. in addition to the community board? What else? So, as, as you know, I'm a member of the steering committee and, and 1 of the founders of the coalition for 100% affordability. I can tell you that as recently as yesterday, um, 1 of our member of our steering committee spoke with Congressman Nadler about the appropriations, you know, and he's, he's still, um, willing to to support us and help us on that. Um, also. Further welcoming in uh, our soon to be congressman as well, our congressman elect Dan Goldman, um, who has been a, a supporter ever since he got into the campaign, at, at least um, if not before. We still have uh, Yulene very much involved. We still have Brian Kavanaugh very much involved. We have Deborah, and then we have the outside. We have Deborah Glick. We have Brad Hoyleman. We have all 72 Manhattan district leaders. Um, we have the county leader, Keith Wright. We have um, some people in Queens, some people in Brooklyn, Gowanus. Um, I mean, that, that's just off the top of my head. And as far as it's funding, a, it's a pretty large and growing coalition of, of support. I think uh, Jill may know something about the funding. Jill. She disappeared. Okay, let's keep going. Richard, Justine, Susan, and Andrew, hands are all up. Richard, brevity is appreciated as we're going ahead. I, I will try, but I, I have to, um, even at the risk of repetition, I have to agree with Bruce about, um, in his comments regarding Jeff's uh, views about the apartment. Our objective here I don't consider it a friendly amendment at all. I know that I guess that's up to the chair of the committee, but I don't consider it a friendly amendment at all. Our objective here 
is to maximize affordability and not to make restrictions that are so um, that are so out of our uh, ex level of expertise and out of our capability uh, to make happen and would make any effort that we are under that we've been undertaking here to bring affordability into this building just that much harder. I simply don't see that as a friendly amendment to something that we're trying to accomplish here. And so I would certainly object to it and I would end up voting no on this amendment, which of course I support if in fact it's included. Well, here's the thing. So, I mean, I knew Roy Draft was going with, or at least I felt that I did. Um, I don't want to speak for him and he's welcome to speak again if, if, and clarify if, if I'm speaking out of turn or incorrectly. But one of the most recent um, affordable housing projects that came to the area around Day Street. Hang, hang on uh, a sec. Hang on a sec. I have a procedural question for Mr. Kettering. The friendly okay. amendment was given. The friendly amendment was accepted by the chair of the committee. So, Richard, I think that part has moved on unless we have to take a roll call vote or a vote on the friendly amendment. Can I clarify? I didn't want to throw a wrench. Tell me if I could just clarify what it means. Well, can, can, can I speak I'm not to sure it that's because... understood, or, or if Jeff could clarify what it means? But I know, but, but he is Jeff is correct in that there have been buildings that have come to this area that people have won the lottery, got in the apartment, and found that it was so small that for the money, it really wasn't affordable and they couldn't afford to live there. And so they had to not accept the apartment. So those kind of affordable housing units aren't helpful. That That is exactly my point, but just procedurally, I was not necessarily suggesting an amendment to this resolution. The, the, the thinking behind my comment was, as you fight for affordability, make sure you fight for something that is meaningful because Day Street is exactly a good example. Those are not meaningful, affordable units. Those are the kinds of places that young kids might be able to tolerate for a few years before they can afford something else, but that's not going to supply long term stable affordable housing. They are meaningless units and whether they have to be identical. To the units being offered at market, that's a different question and kind of a detail and I, 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 I dispute the notion that someone who a developer is getting a huge tax break under 421 a can't afford. Uh, to give away affordable units. I, I dispute that notion. I dispute the notion that five world trade center necessarily, or any other project on public land that, that, that we have to bend over backwards, but I wasn't really intending to put a wrench in the works of this resolution. I don't need this clause in the resolution, but I want you to, I, my request is to be thinking of as you fight for affordable units. That they need to be meaningfully affordable units and whether it's identical or some other thing is another point but but i predict these units these 25 percent units unless we are very explicit in the way we're fighting for them are going to be meaningless affordable units or or affordable units with little practical benefit to the community. so that's my concern doesn't need to be in this resolution because I think the resolution deals with some time frames and input and so forth. So rather than have a big debate on that point here, I'm happy not to have it in the resolution. I do think it's an important point. That's what I was going to say because you're really asking for. So are, are we in Mariama and, and Pat trying to close the loop on this? Are we in or out on just on just? I I think amendment. out and that it can go that it can be a different discussion. But this is Mariama's baby, so I'm gonna. Mariama, to her. I'm happy to do a separate a separate resolution. I'm okay. sure we can find plenty of Perfect. stuff to add to a separate resolution next month. You know. Okay. All right, Justine, Susan, Andrew. So I will I withdraw or I withdraw my acceptance of the friendly amendment, and okay. we'll put it. Yeah. In. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't mean to disrupt things. Just keep going, Justine. I accept. No, um, I'm going to be just quick. I I. Yeah, I support this resolution as it's written. Um, I, I get what Jeff's saying. I know exactly what he's talking about, but it's not to destroy the resolution and okay. I'm stopping there. It's too late. Thank, Thank you. you. Susan? Yeah, I think the issue, Jeff, is comparable and we can do that. 
as a person who did this all my life, my life. Um, uh, and refused certain units, uh, we can make it comparable. I think you're right, but I support the resolution as it is, and we can figure it out. But we're talking comparability. We're not talking exact what you're going to charge someone $2,500 for. But absolutely, and I support the resolution there. Thank you, Susan. Andrew Zelter. So, <clears throat> quick question. I'm, I'm curious if we've observed any national nonprofits that advocate for affordable housing engage at all in this particular project. And, and I guess the reason I'm asking, they probably have extensive experience navigating these types of issues, including potential litigation to, to delay and um, have the opportunity to, to bring their points across. I, have we observed any of those types of organizations engaged in this conversation at all? Well, we're certainly open to nonprofits. In fact, that, that is a, a mechanism for one of the types of bonds that we could, you know, get and that we'd be happy to get um, to make it ha possible. What we have gotten so far as far as nonprofits is support of uh, the feasibility study. It was through a grant from the community trust, New York community trust, that we were even able to do the, the um, feasibility study. They gave us the money uh, through a conduit. We used uh, Welcome to Chinatown as our fiscal agent. You know, all of lower Manhattan wants this and 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 beyond, you know, but we it's people in Chinatown, it's people in LES, it's people in Soho that are all coming together to do this. And so they they helped us to get that grant um, that enabled us to pay uh, of an independent professor of um, both Pratt Institute and NYU, who's also a developer himself. He came up with several models and ways that we could do this. Um, one with a shorter building uh, of about 60 stories and like 900 apartment affordable units. And one of the, you know, 80 to 90 stories that is currently um, being offered with as many as 1200 affordable units. And he's made different changes to that based on conversations with the Port Authority or, you know, with the LMDC. So we can do it this way, we can do it that way. We can take out some commercial, we can add some commercial, you know. So yes. really, the community is really willing to work with the developer. We don't have to be enemies. And this could really be like the first um, project ever in Manhattan to get, or in New York even, to get full support of like the entire county you know, just everybody, community and developers and, and you know, people who need homes and people who, who are housing secure, all on the same page and in support of this. Okay. Andrew, I think you're, so Susan Cole, you're last. Very quickly to answer Andrew's questions, uh, besides Mariama and Jill and some of the other people on this committee, you happen to have one of the foremost nonprofit developers who was in the city and has known in Washington, who is also giving her expertise. So, um, and I know her personally, she was my boss. So there you are, but there are there, and she brings with her a wealth of knowledge. That's all I wanted to say. Unbelievable amount. <laughs> okay. So with that, I see no hands up and I would like to call for the question. Do I get a second? Second. Second. Okay. Mimi, take it home. Okay. So, do we have any um, abs abstentions on this? Catherine abstains. Okay. Recusals. And nays. So, to to be, this is pretty much passes. unanimously. Almost Thank unanimously. You. Thank okay, you very so much. To be clear, Michael Kettering abstains. Abstains. Yes. Okay. You're saying yes. 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 All right. Thank you very, very much. It was a long discussion, but it's so needed and valued. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul. Thank you. Let's shoot that million trees initiative up. Lucian on the, um, on the screen, Paul Goldstein. Okay. You heard the borough president, uh, briefly discuss item number 1. A second million tree initiative, as as noted in the resolution, um, back in 2007, was the first one with Mayor uh, Bloomberg. 
and we did get a number of trees not only uh, throughout the city but in community board one as a result of that uh, the borough president also as does our resolution mentioned many of the benefits from trees including uh, shade to reduce urban heat uh, capturing the precipitation to reduce sewage overflow allowing people to be closer to nature. Uh, we talked about using trees, possibly replace some of these ugly metal bollards that are used for traffic enforcement. So there's a lot of good reasons to support this. Uh, borough president would like us to, as he noted, the other borough presidents are behind it. It was not very controversial, so I would uh, take any questions beyond that. Sorry, I was losing my marks. Um, I see no hands up, so let's call the question. Oh, do you want to take both together? We could do that. I don't think yeah. the other one is particularly controversial either. Perfect. So the other one concerns an RFP issued by the Hudson River Park uh, Trust for new boathouse operators in the four boathouses that they currently have, including one in Community Board 1 run by a group called the Downtown Boathouse. Um, so there were a few things that came up in the course of this conversation. Number one, uh, the community board was never notified or by Hudson River Park Trust of their intention to put out for bid and issue a new RFP for this. We only found out about it uh, through other means, and we were not happy about that. We thought the, the Hudson River Park has an obligation to try to include the community board at an earlier stage of this discussion so that we could have some more meaningful input into the process rather than doing a resolution after after the uh, proposals are due. So uh, there was also a lot of discussion about uh, how a lot of people appreciate the job that the current downtown boathouse has done. They've been in operation since 1994 and They've really offered, you know, nothing but free programs. They offer a lot of programs that include children. I, I mean, it's just a well-run operation. And there are questions, and Hudson River Park was not very precise in answering them concerning exactly what types of uh, uses would be permitted when a new operator comes in. They did talk about affordable programs, but it, it wasn't exclusively that what it is today so anyway the gist of the resolution is as you could see number one is that we call to task hudson river park you know for not notifying us um asking that they better inform us and include us as i said much earlier in the process so I'll take questions on that, or we could just vote on the two of them. I actually don't even see a hand up. So seeing no hands. Uh... Oh, I have a question. I'm sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't react that quickly. Paul, um, just for people, I'll have to recuse, recuse myself on this. And I, I haven't actually been able to read the resolution. Paul, they're, they're RFPing four boathouses. Was there any indication that this is the first time I know that they've done that? Is there any indication that they're going to select one operator for four boat houses, or they can have the option of separating different operators for di for different uh, boat houses? Oh no, I think they have the capacity to uh, determine different operators for different. Right. Okay, houses. and that's okay. what they did when they put it out for bid last time. Yeah, but I've never recalled it going all out at the same time. I'll look at the RFP. But okay. uh, thank you, Bob. All four boat houses in one RFP. All right. Oh, I do see a bucket of hands. Andrew, Mark, and Bob Schneck. And remember when we take the vote? 
everybody. I want to see all your lovely smiley faces. Andrew Zelter, and then Mark Amoruso, then Bob Schneck. Yeah, just to, to supplement what Paul said and somewhat in response to, to Bob's question, we were advised by the Hudson River Park Trust that this is the exact same RFP word for word that they used or have used uh, at least on two occasions. So um, there's, from what we understand, there's nothing different about this RFP that the incumbent for providers did not respond to or have not responded to in the past. That's good to know. Thank you, Andrew, very much. Mark Amoruso, you're next. Paul, what was the response to the downtown boathouse people folks? Were they informed or how were they in the loop uh, with regards to uh, with the trust? Well, they knew about it and uh, they helped inform the community board about it because, uh, as we said, Hudson River Park did not. Hudson so River I Park don't know Center. that they were informed because they just happened to see the RFP or mm -hmm. that Hudson River Park specifically made it a point to send it around to the current operators of the four boathouses, and three of them are not in community board one. Uh, it's pretty disturbing on the part of Hudson River Park Trust. Um, not happy with that. Thank you very much, Mark. Bob? Uh, I would like to say that the uh, current operator, um, which uh, is run by Graham Burchell, who is definitely a, a friend or at least the person in this community board, is really a remarkable public asset and it's it's one of the things that we have in our downtown community that was unmatched anywhere and actually actually i think graham has is our that program is the root of several other programs that are all successful so the idea of of using uh making that public resource available in the remarkable ways they do that in, in terms of socializing the people involved with it in terms of involving kids in terms of attracting the public it's really a remarkable program and to just just see it sunset so easily um at least i want to make the comment that it's important that we try to defend it a little and also i'm surprised that graham isn't here and now that i know about this, uh, I want to talk to him about it. So he you. was here earlier as a participant, but uh, I don't know. He's not here now. And I would just note that, you know, the kinds of comments you made about downtown boathouse were the only types that uh, people made at the meeting, only very, very positive things. And Graham is a great, and I even remember Jim Wetteroff, who was his uh, predecessor started the boathouse and he was tremendous uh, for the community as well. I'm going to also point out that this is a positive resolution for the boathouse and a pause and it does denote our support of the downtown boathouse programming as it is. So if you are if you are supportive of that, you don't need to say anything because we're going to take a vote and your yes vote says that um, just trying to move things along folks because it's 10 p.m. Richard. Justine and Sarah, think carefully if you very much need to comment on either one of these resolutions or have a change or addition. Richard. Uh, I do not, but as I realize, I have uh, uh, an ongoing relationship right now with the uh, Hudson River Park Trust. I'm going to need to recuse myself from this measure, which I would otherwise uh, certainly, I think the boathouse is great. and. So when we call, I would, say, I would say just one other thing: the, the the trust did make it clear that this is part of their standard requirement of having to put uh, put the, these uh, put organizations like the River Project and others out to RFP, and there was no intent specifically to replace any particular one. But I have to exactly, recuse. no problem. When we take the vote, please call your name out to recuse on HRP, but not on the Million Trees. Uh, moving on, Justine. Sorry, um, I, you, Richard, answered my question. I think I want to know where and how the uh, current boathouse operates, how Graham is feeling about it, and where he feels threatened, and what was going on with that. If there was any intention to replace, but we don't know. Is I guess is the short answer. 
I think it was answered. Uh, you can certainly listen to the recording in the meeting. Thank okay. you. All righty. Uh, seeing no other hands, let's go for it. Mimi, I say call the question. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. Does anyone oppose? An oh, and if you oppose something, let me know which one it is. Um, or, you know, with the other, uh, any oppositions? Anyone need to abstain or recuse? I think I probably need to recuse because I sit on the advisory council for HRP. Right. Wow. Is there a time when it fails? Um, I think yeah. I have to recuse also. Um, I have a lease with the Hudson River Park. Tammy, I would just tell you my read on it is you do not have to recuse. Yeah. You're volunteering your time. Yeah. I don't think Richard or Tammy, you're not getting a financial. Yeah. I know I have to recuse, but. Uh, I don't think you do, Tammy, but that's you know just what? my opinion. I'll I'm not do, a lawyer. I'll do a, I'll do a double check with Coib, but <laughs> always better to ask for permission, not forgiveness. As Tammy, I was, on the Coib, yeah, I, agree. Uh, I was on the Coib seminar. You do not need to recuse. <laughs> okay, perfect. Then I'm 100% in. Let's rock. All righty. All righty. Okay, so, so far I have uh, Tamley as recused. And uh, Corman, I still, uh, I want to be cautious yeah. here and recuse. Have to recuse if the river project is having a lease or something like that. Okay. All right. So tell me, yeah, even though, in, the, uh, in fairness to Richard, down. he volunteers his time and he does not. Um, he does Bob, let Richard handle it thing. wherever Richard wants to go. He, uh, you Sammy, know I mean? could um, uh, speak, I hope. But not for Richard. No, I could speak for whatever I like to speak about Tammy. We're, we're okay. moving right now, though. So, um, anyone else need to? Um, this is Laura, and I abstain. All right. For both, or which one? For the boathouse one. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Mimi. I needed to be clear. I'm recusing on the boathouse only. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Two. Okay. Is that everybody? We good? I think so. I think so. All right. Thanks. All right. That brings us hey, happy to Thanksgiving all. Happy Thanksgiving, Paul. Thank happy you so much. Uh, that brings us to Betty, and then I think that's. Oh, actually, um, that brings us to Betty, and then we have one new business that Susan will go over for Pier Fifteen, which is roll call. Just real quick, Mark, are you able to have your camera on? I know you're here. But you didn't say whether or not you were voting. Okay, we're good. Okay, let me. Uh... Dr. Betty Kay. Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to start with because there were comments about last mile logistics, which is uh, Borough President Rick Levine's proposal. The presentation was actually done by Chris Carroll from his staff uh, this month, but we will be continuing it on into next month with hopefully a resolution. So those who are interested in the e-commerce and dealing with that last mile logistics come in December. Street co-naming also we'll be defining the community support and that's kind of the last element that we really have to deal with so that's another thing that's continuing on into december so i'm not going to say anything more about those at this time do you have one resolution to go after and you heard a number of people came forward to speak at the beginning of this meeting the public so the site safe bicycle routes connecting the brooklyn bridge with the hudson river greenway you go to the next slide Next slide. Office team, next slide, please. There you go. As you can see, the biggest routes really in and out of our district that are easy for cyclists to use are along the Hudson River Greenway, as well as in and out uh, to Brooklyn on the Brooklyn Bridge, which is getting even more pressure right now because they're doing work on Manhattan Bridge and they are storing the construction materials on the bike lanes, the 
Manhattan Bridge. So that option is, is not so good right now. Anyway, the resolution as it is, if you go to the next slide, we had a very broad base of support, which really is why it was, I think, unanimously approved in committee. Uh, Transportation Alternatives, keep in mind, is a nonprofit that's headquartered in FIDI. So you have a lot of people who come in and out of the district working due to them. Open Plans, which includes Streets Blog, is also a not for profit and it's headquartered in Tribeca. So they're also part of our constituency here in our district. We had senior citizens from Battery Park City and the Financial District, the recyclists who came forward, strongly saying they needed more protected areas to use their bicycles in to feel safe to continue riding. We had residents who cycle uh, to travel within as well as outside of the district, in and out of the district, which you heard a lot of people coming today about commuting in and out. Because we do have a lot of employers in our district, as well as all the delivery services workers who, of course, aren't as outspoken. If you go to the next slide, I think it's just it's a pretty straight. Oh, I want to include just how much there really are family uses, and this is just my building, but they're all along in Battery Park City. The families that use cargo bikes routinely for a lot of their transportation. So these are much needed services and we don't have a good protected east west route through our district at this time. Next. Yeah, this, so this is a pretty straightforward simple resolution uh, asking the New York City DOT to study design and install eastbound and westbound protected bike lanes. Why? Because we don't care if it's a two-way bike lane or if they separate them into two one-way bike lanes uh, between Route 9A and Center Street at the Brooklyn Bridge. And then also asking our elected officials to please make sure that this happens. Any comments or questions? My hand is up, Betty. I'll, I was going to get you there. Don't worry. I'm There's sorry. a couple I'll, of hands up, but Mitch, wait, you're, happy, wait. you're happy to go first, Mitch? We'll go okay. Mitch, Bruce, Eric, and Jeff in that okay. order. And I'm, then hoping it was, I'm hoping it was an oversight because everything Betty said just now is 100% correct. There was 100% consensus. But when transportation alternatives came in, they were advocating for a bike lane to protect on Chamber Street. And uh, uh, some of us thought it was okay. And some of us thought it was, it was ridiculous because of the, the, the size and, and the two ways of, of Chamber Street. And, and and so Eric, you had a, a and suggestion. That's why this doesn't ask for Chambers. Well, okay, the where the where okay. You had said, Betty, okay, there's on page two, the whereas, you're not directly asking for it, but before we took the vote, you specifically said, just like you just said just now, that we're just asking for an east west. We're not gonna name any street as inferring that we 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 advocate for that. That's for DOT to figure out. The whereas, I would propose that we take out the Chamber Street inference on the whereas because it's really in a roundabout way saying that we think that's one of the, the, the areas that, that we, we kind of like would, fa would favor. And that's kind of the spirit of when we took the vote and everybody agreed to support the protected bike lane for safety reasons, it was under the assumption that you were going to, there's going to be no mention of Chamber Street, and it's whatever, you know, East West, whatever DOT then could study. And so this, it's kind of a little, you know, slippery that this Chamber Street is still in there now. And um, I'm pretty sure I'm, my recollection is correct. Uh, and that's why we all supported it. So I, I would propose if we can just take that whereas out, that's what was kind of led, uh, at least me to believe, and a few of the other people to support Mitch, 100%. Uh, cool. You're good. You're good. I think she gets it. Thank you. Betty? Let's hear from other people. So I'm not going to override a whole committee over without yes. hearing. No, no, but Betty, you're not being honest now. You you said you were taking out the word. Mitch, 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 Mitch. please. We'll there hear from everybody. Up. Let's hear it them. Hands out. I hear you. Let's let's not get into personal attacks back and forth. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's I'm, yes. I'm not here to litigate it. You know, just. I, just, I hear you, Mitch. Uh, yeah. It won't go. It it'll come back before we vote. Mm -hmm. Bruce. Uh, yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank Betty for a very granular resolution, um, analyzing each and every option. I thought that was terrific. You went street by street. Second of all. I, I would, without the vitriol and the invective, 
I more or less agree with Mitch that um, certain two-way streets like Chambers and Worth are absolutely inappropriate, specifically inappropriate for this purpose. Worth Street, since it's finally been opened after seven years, has become a jungle of cars and buses. Suddenly there's a new bus route. Almost every time a city bus turns eastbound from Church Street, it gets stuck and the intersection is is frozen for about three or four minutes. It was so improperly planned. And unlike, unlike Chamber Street, like you say, Worth Street doesn't even, you'd have to make one, two, three, four turns to get to the um, Hudson River from Worth Are you Street. asking for something? So uh, I just want to ask Betty, whether she thinks it's appropriate to be specific about Chambers and Worth in the final whereas is or in the resolution. I'm just putting it out there because I think it was a great resolution otherwise. Well, the Thank whereas you. is we're dealing with the information about the various alternatives that were discussed or are already in place because there is no perfect answer. So it was just giving the opinion of the opinions that came out on these various and it's not that there's a full consensus because there are many people who don't want anything for cyclists on the city because they believe it'll interfere with cars. Our chambers and uh, worth already. How did you put it already? What was the word you used? Um, done or or considered or part of the plan? There is no plan. I mean, the plan is really what the traffic engineers look at. I see. Thank and you. these are simply the ones that are the obvious ones. Chamber Street comes as obvious because it's it's directly between the two points, but it may not be obvious for other reasons like traffic engineering. Okay, uh, Bruce, you good? I think that's Bruce is good because he put himself back on mute. Eric, you? Uh, yes, um, I, I I wanted the second what Mitch was saying because um, I'm also on the transportation committee. Uh, we had a uh, a big rigorous debate on it, uh, and the consensus was that we didn't want to um, identify Chamber Street because that would show a preference, and that we weren't. No one at that meeting was a traffic engineer, and we should leave it up to them. We all agreed that there needs to be a protected, bi-directional uh, bike path uh, protected. But we did not want to identify which street it should be. Um, I do think that the resolution it it does indirectly favor Chambers, um, and it disregards Warren and Murray. I mean, it, it is the existing route. I mean, it can be improved. I, I I think the way that it was written, it's like taking Murray off the table, and I think it that should be one of the options for the DOT engineers to consider. Um, also, I'd like to add a friendly amendment. To add, whereas any proposal by the New York City DOT should consider the impact for all modes of transportation to consider the travel times for emergency services and the impact to road traffic to and from the bridge, because this was also what was discussed as as concerns with any new. Um, protected bike path between um, West 9A and uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, I've written that down too because Betty said she wants to go through everyone first. Jeff, um, I'm glad to hear the committee speaking about Chamber Street because when I read this uh, resolution, I thought to myself, "Is the committee really advocating for Chamber Street?" Because that's certainly how the resolution came across, and I had a hard time believing the committee was advocating for Chamber Street because it doesn't seem very practical. I have a suggestion on perhaps how to deal with that, but I have an independent uh, issue, and that is the discussion of closing a lane on Route 9A. Um, I, I think the, res the whereas is inaccurate in its description of the resolution that we did in May of 2020. We certainly did not favor closing 9A in the way that it's being discussed today. We favored studying it during the pandemic uh, as a temporary closure in recognition of the fact that there was hardly any road traffic at that time and there was a vastly increased 
bicycle traffic at that time. We had a subsequent discussion where it looked like the traffic was coming back um, and we made no resolution at all once the traffic was coming back. Um, and uh, I personally think closing a lane on 9A, which this resolution basically says we're in favor of and on record as having been in favor of is number one, inaccurate, and number two is something that I would oppose or at least not without a considerable traffic study. Uh, 9A right now is crammed with traffic Reducing its capacity by one third would only make it, you know, gridlock, uh, which of course adds to pollution. So I, I, I would ask that the two whereas is that reference the borough president's plan and the um, resolution that we did back in 2020 just be stricken. Um, alternatively, we could make them more accurate. Um, and by by that, I, I mean, I prefer just to get rid of them because there's something they're not necessary for the discussion of East West and I do favor an East West connection. That's a lot better than what we have uh, today. Um, uh, so, I, I can't vote for the resolution with those 2 whereas is as they are. Um, if the board, the committee wants to go on record as being in favor of 9, a, I think that's a separate resolution that demands a separate discussion. Um, uh, I do have some suggestions on, on changing them if anybody's interested in hearing them. Um, so, well, before I, you do that, you, you had another one that you wanted. I caught the first one that you wanted stricken. The, which was the, the, not reference, the, the reference to the borough president's. Yes, I got that one. Strike that, and I would strike the next one that says we passed a re resolution in May because we that's not an accurate description of that resolution. Now. What, I mean, we could change that by, you know, we passed a res resolution uh, asking DOT to study uh, to to study temporarily expanding the Greenway during the pandemic. Um, uh, but that's all that's all the resolution says. I have it up on my screen right now. Uh, it certainly doesn't advocate studying it, closing it for all time. Um, and, it, and it didn't even advocate closing it then. It advocated studying whether to close it then. So I would just suggest we drop it. It's not necessary for the east west west discussion. Um, and, and let me just talk about the east west because it is important. I personally think Chambers is likely to be a no go uh, for reasons that I'm sure you had all discussed in your committee meeting. I'm not prepared to offer a solution without a study, and maybe we do eliminate all parking on Chamber Street and and uh, uh, and, and, and allow uh, protected bike lanes there. I'm not sure there's even enough room that if you're going to do that to have a two-way street and do that, but that's for the traffic engineers to study. I think it's just, just as easily imaginable that they could improve uh, Warren and Murray. Um, so. But the resolution definitely reads as if we are advocating for Chambers Street. Um, we harshly criticize all the other routes, and then we just describe the Chambers route in a favorable way. Um, uh, and 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 so I don't think anybody could read the resolution as written as anything other than advocating Chambers Street. Um, and um, uh, okay. So so the, okay. Those, 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 those are my, I've those got are, all your notes. Anything those else? Those are my comments. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Andrew. So, a potential friendly amendment to the therefore be it resolved, perhaps incorporate language that we implore DOT to collaborate with Community Board 1 to study, design, and install. I think the way it's written, we're kind of implying we're leaving it to you. You go ahead and, and handle all of this. And just given the conversations we're having about worth and chambers, it would seem we want to have a, a seat at the table as it's being designed and, and considered. Thank you, Andrew. I've got that note and that's uh, goes to the therefore be it resolved, not the further, right? So I've got all Correct. the notes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mimi. Hey, um, I agree with everyone that says that this, um, it definitely favors Chamber Street and we did discuss that we shouldn't do that. 
I would also like to point out underneath the Chambers Street, whereas it says bike lanes belong on streets with destinations that people want to go to. Major routes should be multimodal. I, I'm a cyclist, blah, blah, blah. I also ride all kinds of other vehicles. And I don't think that the routes should be required to be multimodal. I believe that bikes, if possible, should be completely separate from cars. I believe that there should be bike routes. They should go to the places that people want to go to. But I, I feel like I, I enjoy riding my bicycle in spaces where there aren't cars. And so if we could have this bike route separate from the cars, that would be the most ideal. And this particular whereas seems to imply that they should be right next to each other. Um, and so I, I feel like those two whereas is the Chamber Street one and then the the multimodal one should be removed. Betty, do you, uh, the multimodal, was that a discussion that was had at committee? Uh, yes, because that was brought up by a number of people that they, they do use Chambers, they're going to continue to use Chambers Street, uh, and the destination can be on Chambers Street. So it was brought up that the other bike lanes, such as on, on Church Street and others, are on streets where there are buses, where there are bus lanes, where there are uh, truck routes and other things. So they are multimodal. Tammy, so there's can nothing I unique about chambers, for instance, that okay. we didn't have Betty, other streets. We're saying that it should be. Would the was the committee could be or should be? Tammy, can I respond no. to that? Uh, no, no, I think Betty. could okay. be would I'll make come, sense. I'll, I'll come back to you, Mitch, Thank, after you. I get through everybody else. But I've got to give everybody a chance to go yes. around the clock. Thank you. What I see in multimodal is that you're saying that the cars and the bikes need to be on the exact same street. Is that but they can be on the same street? Yes. So we're not, but you're not saying can be. You're saying should be. So the, so that that is the question. Should that change to should be? It says should be. Right. Should that change to? So I'm so lose my mind. Could be. Could be is is. That's but, speaking as a traffic engineer, so could doesn't work. Could is just how it is right now. Well, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. How about might? Because Betty, what you're saying is that bike lane. You're saying that bike lanes should be on multimodal, denying the opportunity that it could be on a dedicated. It's 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 a one way recommendation. That's why I'm asking about the committee's feelings on that. Was it a conversation that it could be on a multimodal and that we're not only advocating for a sole bike lane street? That's a different verbiage than should be. Should be is saying only put them on multimodals. Could doesn't work. Uh, let me look at it simply because could is speaking as a traffic engineer, which we weren't and aren't but we still aren't and we're not speaking as an engineer we're speaking as a community board and they fully well i'm saying it doesn't work okay uh i don't me... think it works this way either because it looks like we only want bike lanes to be with cars for now on it looks like it's our stance like it, it just seems that correct and that's not i don't think that's my stance i would prefer to have a whole street blocked off just for bicycles okay wait to tell keep... people that one yeah, let's keep going. Jess is next and there's a lot of hands up. So Jess. Yeah, I just want to say quickly on the Chamber Street point. Um, we at the committee heard a presentation specifically regarding Chamber Street from a leading transportation advocacy group in our district. We ended up agreeing that against my wishes and against other people's wishes, but I ended up agreeing that we shouldn't suggest and therefore be it resolved that it should be any particular route. Um, we are not supporting Chamber Street in this resolution. It, we are just mentioning the, what we as the committee had before us. That's literally all it is um, and what we heard. We, it, this is why it is so difficult to build any infrastructure in this city. We are literally debating the vibe of this resolution right now. We are asking for a study. We are asking for a study. That is it. Let's push this forward because I think we all agree here um, that we want this. So let's stop debating the vibe and let's just go for it. That's all Jess, I have to say. Jess, I have a question for you. Yep. 
you mentioned, and I think this is part of the problem that's missing from here. Um, if I'm hearing everybody and trying to find a path for majority to pass a resolution is transportation alternatives presented that chamber streets, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sit in that we are supportive. It, you are putting in the character of not only that fact, but that Chamber Street was presented as an option by transportation alternatives. Is that a cleaner way to have that come forward? Sure, but I, I, I mean, I think that's sort of what it's saying. I mean, we can, I guess we can. But it has to, it has to be really clean because remember, you're looking at, these are people who have not been at the meeting, right? Who are looking at this saying, I've read this and this says, this is what it says. So when we send it off out of here is going to be somewhat similar to what people who were not sitting in the committee. So it's about trying to get what the committee says forward with clarity that really shows where you're going. So it's not really about changing the temperature and tone. It's about having it be uh, properly annotated. So it doesn't look like the community board who at the end decided that they would not necessarily 100% they didn't want to recommend chambers as a direct link. If it reads that way to the uninformed, then it needs to be caveated to say transportation alternatives at the, you know, at, at this meeting, transportation alternatives noted chamber street. That's their opinion. That's not whether or not it's fact and things like that. It's their favorable opinion of that one street. Because when you do go, go look through it, because right over there, you're saying. Bike lanes belong on streets with destinations that people want to go to. Above that, you're listing Chamber Street as a street with destinations that people want to go to. So one is what transportation alternatives is saying. The other is what the community board is saying. And those two should be very clearly delineated to have the average person who wasn't at the meeting understand which where the board is. That's my only comment back to that. Because I'd like to be able to get this through in a in a meaningful way that we can get a study done. That's my only comment about that whole paragraph. Jess, uh, are you okay? Yeah, I, I'm I'm okay. I mean, I think I, I I still think it sort of says that, and I think we're asking for a study, and I and I, I highly doubt that the Department of Transportation is going to pick it up and say, well, the community board wanted this, so we can't look at Warren Street or whatever other street. Um, they have Apple Maps. They know the streets down there. I, I, I can't imagine this is. I don't want to okay. believe it because I just can't imagine okay. this is a big issue. <laughs> Laura, I move to table this. I move no, to table. no, 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 no. Uh, I called for Laura. Okay, Paul, I appreciate you. that. Put your hand up, and we'll go from there. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, first of all, of course, DOT is not going to do anything without thoroughly studying it. So there's that. But the other thing is. 9A is state DOT and the east west connection is city DOT. And I agree with Andrew, the community, we need we need to really be involved with we need to be at the table with both of those, the city and the state DOTs, and really talk about the bike situation because it is very dangerous. I'm a, I ride bikes a lot and I can tell you 9A is still way too crowded and the e-bikes and the e-scooters are on there and it's really scary. And the other thing is that the Army Corps of Engineers is talking about putting their flood protection somewhere on 9A. The Battery Park City Authority is talking about putting a barrier across 9A and you know that would possibly close it and God only knows where the flood protection will go. And we really need an integrated strategy about this. I mean, it may be that 9A should be I hate to say it, but, you know, like really, like really rethought because and and that median should be aggregated to Hudson River Park and the whole bikeway enlarged in, you know, in conjunction with flood protection. So the I thought Andrew's point about we really need to be at the table for for a holistic conversation about this is is really right on um, and and I just hope that city and state DOT will collaborate with each other. Well, um, maybe to your point, Laura, and this is a fabulous point to have to 
for us relooking at 9A with those visions and lenses. And Betty, maybe because this is supposed to be about an east west access, the paragraphs for 9A don't belong in here at all. Because there are many other discussions to be had, and we've already opined on that at one point. I already have them crossed out. Okay. Okay. I mean, I do think the 9A really does. We absolutely have to be talking about 9A. I mean, there's so much, there's so many with the resilience and the, the e-bikes and everything. It's, we would be really remiss as a planning board, not to be front row, you know, front row participants in that. And we have to insist and Betty, I'm happy to talk to you. After this, you know, uh, no, we can't because uh, Manhattan Borough President already has a proposal about some things on Route 9A anyway. I, I saw that, but it's like, and I'm happy to opine and have well, it studied. I'm going to say there's more going on than that because there's stuff going on. Give other stop. people a chance to talk. Stop, 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 stop. They're yeah. having okay, a done. Thank you. conversation, these two. Give thank some you. other people okay, a chance. Okay, goodbye. I'm done. I'm thank going. you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Okay. We have lost two people from the board. So please note that we, if your comment is not ripe about the East West connection and this, and Paul, you will be called after the other people I called first. So Laura has gone. Mark Amoruso was next. Yes, thank you. Uh, let me say first, uh, I agree with Jeff's comments. And then earlier, Bruce Ehrman's comments as well. And you know that the three of us generally don't agree on anything. So, you, well, the board members should take that to heart that if the three of us are agreeing on something, it's probably true. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, with that being said, uh, I think that uh, those comments should um, be incorporated into the resolution or things it, it, taken away from this resolution that were mentioned. Uh, with regards to 9A, bike lanes on 9A, I mean, the, the problem is here is like yes, transportation, not... transportation alternatives is, is really, really like a, a radical organization. There is no other side to the, to the story when someone is at this meeting saying, wait a second, bike lanes, taking a lane away on Route 9A is stupid. It just, the, just on the face of it, you don't need to be an engineer to know that it's the wrong thing to do. And, 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 uh, Mark, 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 excuse Mark, hold me. On, can hold I on. please finish? Other people have talked for 20 Absolutely minutes and you haven't interrupted Mark. them. Please let me finish my thought. Please. Mark, you, you got what she, she said. Yes. Yeah, I understand. But can I just, uh, no one yes, else is absolutely. Please let me finish my thought. Please, please. go for it. Please. As long as it's on so, the mezzo. So, my point is, is that the other side is never uh, given a voice. It's always one side, and the politicians take it for gospel because they're afraid of their advocacy. Uh, I I think just this resolution should just be tabled uh, right now. There is too much uh, ambiguity. Uh, there should be a special meeting about this stuff. It is it is too radical uh, and 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 too controversial and too transformative to just have a committee with a few people on it, and then it comes to us and we're spending an hour on it. So I'm, I just think we should just table this. I'm asking that we table it. So that's two asks for table. I'm going to call for a vote on it. After we're going to vote for it. We're going to call for a vote on that. Okay. Um, I want everybody to understand. Betty has already said that the borough presidents and the comments about nine A are being removed because this is not a resolution about I think nine. You're out of order, Tammy. I am telling people what they are voting to table, where we are up to date. They are voting to table a resolution on a protected bikeway connecting the Brooklyn Bridge and the Hudson River Greenway. This is not a 9A resolution. And Betty has already stated that the items that revolved around 9A would be removed. That's the last update that we have currently. We don't so Chambers. With that, we're going to take a roll call. Can I say what else is also dropped? Uh, please do, Betty. Okay. The whereas about the bike lanes and the multimodal. That okay. particular one. Does that include Chamber Street, Betty? That one didn't name a street, period. I'm sorry. Because that, that's whereas did not mention a street. 
He's asking if you are removing or changing the Chamber Street note. The way that you did it, you that said we're in the committee. The Chamber Street links Stuyvesant High School and the Borough Manhattan. Mean that? Mm -hmm. Yes, the way that you, it was, it was, it was. You read it to us in the committee before we voted. Uh, it, it will be modified to, as Tammy suggested, that uh, Transportation Alternatives has asked, has suggested Chamber Street, which links those, okay, which is why it's you, so heavily used. Then, then I just want to ask you, Betty, directly, if I can, Tammy, did it use, before we took a vote in the committee, because most of the other people on the board weren't there, you specifically said you were removing Chamber Street from the Rezo to make it a general east-west connection. Didn't you say that, Betty? That's why that's why I voted for it. The resolution part is a therefore be it resolved. There okay, is I'm sorry, no the whereas, request. I just want to, uh, I didn't I didn't say that. to make be, be virtual uh, uh, vitriol at all. I apologize if it came off like that. But you specifically said you were not going to you were taking Eric's suggestion and you were removing Chamber Street from the whereas. And no, 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 not from the whereas because Oh. To say there are certain streets that can't even be mentioned was not discussed. It was discussed, Betty. Okay, no. stop. Okay, We're doing Betty. a roll call. Wait, 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 wait. Doing okay. a roll call on table. The, the way it's currently written, it's still pro Chamber Street, and it should not be pro anything. It well, should like vote to yeah. table. Bob's exactly. had his hand up for a long time. We're voting to table. Let's That's where we are. We've had it. Floor. We've had it suggested. We've had it seconded. Now we have to take that vote. All right. Um, just look can I the, just ask uh, what what did what did uh, Betty say she's removing so that I know what we're voting on? She removed what has been removed is the paragraph that was about the borough president and nine a. The second paragraph yes. that was about the community board's nine a resolution. The third paragraph okay. uh, below not the third, but the paragraph that is below Chamber Street that says bike lanes on streets with destinations want to go to. That whole those, thing those came two out. Things, those two paragraphs are removed. Oh, three. Those three. Those three. And above where it says Chamber Street, it would say transport transportation alternatives presented that. We're not we're not supporting or saying that they suggested. We're just saying they presented that. It doesn't say anything else. They presented that Chamber Street directly links Stuyvesant. And then the uh, that's that. That is those are all the current changes that Betty and the committee has given thus far. And what the other one would be that there be a therefore be it resolved that be it further resolved that the DOT work with Community Board One um, to study and explore and collaborate on design. Well, not with the study because. We we don't have that capacity. I I, okay. as far I as had a selection. I, I had a suggestion, uh, the friendly amendment that DOT should we, consider the impact. Eric, Is that going to be included? Eric, you have Guys, to we have a motion to table. You have please a motion. assess them to quorum okay. of Robert exactly. Schools, please. I'm trying, Mark. I'm no, trying. No, you are, and they're not listening to you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Roll call. Let's go. Okay, so I just need to. Make sure that we have a column that's ready and Mimi is prepared to fill in the correct column. Um, Lucy, are we using this last column with the blue heading? Um, yes, um, wait, okay. no, it's in red. You, we can create a, just rename it to, um, table. Okay. okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Blank. Okay. We're ready. I, I'm going to ask you to reverse it for me. What? I forget to come back. Oh, to her. She's... okay. Well, I could also start from the very bottom. <laughs> Go for it. All right. Yeah. Whoa. It's actually honestly like super hard now that it's being edited right in front of me. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Don't touch it. Okay. Um, Selter. Um, no. No to table, correct? Yes. All right. All right. You? You, yes, the table. Thank you. Townley? My, you're up to Townley already? Yeah, yes. I'm going backwards. Okay, my my computer shut everything. off. So it's yes to table? Yes. Okay, it's getting late. I get cranky. Uh, Tammy, sorry I yelled at you before. Um, 
I vote yes to table. Thank okay. you, Bob, thank you. and thank you. Vera Song. Yes to table. Thank you. Jimmy Song. Yes to table. Thank you. Laura Starr. No. No to table. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Schneck. No to table. To table. Robinson. Yes to table. Yes to table. More. Sorry, no to table. <laughs> no to table. Thank you. Minsley. I vote. I vote no to table. I would uh, support this. Okay. Resolution. All right, Meltzer. No. All right. Uh, Lion. No. All right, Lynn. Lynn. No. Not here. All right. Um, scooching, scooching on. Uh, Learner. Uh, Joe Lerner. Nope. Uh, Kettering. Uh, yes to table. Thank you. Canal. Vaughn. What was that? I'm Not here. Oh, okay. Okay. Oops. Um, got it. Uh, K. Hey, no. I was in there. Sorry, I was putting the wrong letter in there. It's so late. Uh, Jew? Jew table, yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. Grant? Grant, no. Thank you. Goldstein? Yes. Thank you. Galloway? Uh, Galloway, no. Thank you. Roman? Roman, yes, and Betty, no disrespect intended. Um, thank you. Friedman? Uh, Friedman is a no. Thank you. Forsberg? Forsberg is a no. Thank you. Oh, man, it's me. <laughs> Um, you can come uh, back to Flynn if just yeah. I'm gonna come back to Flynn. Flynn doesn't know yet. Uh, Flores. Flores, yes. Thanks. Airman. Airman developing hemorrhoids from sitting here for four hours abstains. <laughs> abstain? You're gonna abstain from this one after all that? Go on, Chris. Yeah, thank you. You do whatever you want, buddy. Curtis. Curtis, no. Uh, Kucha. So I have a stupid question. Mm -hmm. Were any amendments made or this is we're voting? Yes. Did you not yeah. listen? I missed it. I was confused. So the yes. men there, okay. there were many amendments made. And they were agreed to. Then I'm then right. I'm gonna then I'm going to um not table. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Corman. I'm confused. I'm not used to the reverse order. Uh, yeah, Corman, noted, noted table. Okay, thank you. Coleman? No. Thank you. Cole? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Charcutian? Charcutian, yes to table. Thank you. Chapman? No to table. <laughs> thank you. Chang? And no to table. Thank you. Cassell? Cassell, yes to table. Thank you. Cameron? No. All righty. Blank. Abstain. All right. And let me see what's happening here. I'm going to. All right. So Lynn is gone. Learner is also gone. Oh, right. Yeah, me. Um, Man. Yes, the table. What's the vote count, please? It's uh, 16 in favor, 19 opposed, 2 abs 
15. Motion fails. Motion fails. So now we vote. All right. I, I think we've had a robust discussion. I am going to review the thing. Eric, you're going to wait a second before I go I'm going to review again. Betty, please, there'll be an additional, therefore, be it resolved about collaborating and studying um, and working with community board 1. We have removed 3 paragraphs. Pursuant to the vote taken before and 1 has changed about transportation alternatives presented. Correct. Okay. Now there are 2 hands up. I, I am not joking. Pull up the timer. Everybody gets. 1 minute. That's it. 1. Lucian timer, please, or Lucy who's ever got it, but 1 minute. Eric. I'm mute. Eric, you're muted. You where, where is my friendly amendment going. about about and. That DOT should consider the impact for all modes of transportation to consider the travel times for emergency services and the impact to road traffic to and from the bridge. That will be included in the study that we're asking them to do. Will it be in in, in, in the, in, in in the, the therefore resolution? Be resolved? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, Rosa. I would ask that everybody who asked to table actually attend the transportation committee meetings because it is so frustrating that every time transportation comes up every single month, we have these crazy long discussions and people are not familiar with the issue. So I did attend this transportation meeting, even though I am not on the committee and there was a very robust discussion on all of these issues. I actually felt like the text uh, resolution was fair to what was discussed and that the therefore be it resolved reflected the fact that it was asking for a study. And so I and, and I am frankly really disturbed by the personal tone of attacks that happens every time transportation <laughs> issues comes up. I do not understand where that is coming from, but wherever it is coming from, it is not okay. We're supposed to be working together as a group, as volunteers. We are not here to attack each other. And so I would kindly request that that stop now, please, because it's happening every single month and it's very disturbing. Thank you. Rosa, thank you very much. I could not have said it better. That would have been my closing statement. So thank you, Rosa, better from you. Jeff Galloway. I just want a clarification on the reference to transportation alternatives because the wording makes a huge difference. I, I, I don't want to imply that we are supporting the transportation alternatives presentation, which was chain restrict. It just says transportation alternatives presented. Presented what? That chamber street directly links. Fine. Blah, 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 blah. That, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. As neutral as it goes. That's fine. Cody, you're next. I'm just going to say that, uh, oh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, the, the, there are plenty of other alternatives besides Chamber Street. That was just suggested because it is a direct route over to the, to the, to the Greenway. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's Reed Street, there's Murray Street, there's others, you know, it, it may not be a two lane road. I mean, a two lane bike path, but there are. It's, it's listed the, on the, whereas is all the other streets are listed as well. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, Cody Morton. Yes, uh, I think 1 thing uh, additional that this uh, resolution would benefit. It would help allow uh, uh, children to use uh, bikes to go across town and uh, children from uh, FIDI and, and city hall area to have more access to the parks on the on the west side uh, on the Hudson River Park. So I think that's a, a very important. Uh, uh, element and I would support the resolution and as an avid biker, I think that uh, uh, it's a very needed thing to have a protect the, these protected bike lanes and, and uh, I, you have to trust the DOT. The DOT is going to come up with a good design that would uh, accommodate all modes of transportation. So I would support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Morton. Bob Townley. I will uh, take Rose's advice. And Betty, when the transportation committee meets, I would like to attend when you discuss 9A. 
I spend a lot of time in Hudson River Park. I know that bike way and I'm very much opposed. It is not the busiest bike way in the city and I'm very much opposed to moving a second bike lane into the West Side Highway. Um, well, when we discuss 9A, we will make sure that you get the memo. I appreciate that, Tammy. My pleasure. Susan, next. Very quickly, uh, I would like us to take a voice vote on this and to postpone uh, uh, my last resolution, uh, Francis and my last resolution on licensing, because it will take too long and it won't give it a fair whatever, and we can do it in December. Can we do that, Tammy? Hands down, God bless you. God bless. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Love it. Okay, so uh, this will be the last resolution of the night, and it is a roll call. Mimi, get yourself ready for roll call on this one. We are tabling. Um, uh, the chair of licensing has recalled right. the last one. Okay, I see no other hands up. So I'm going to call the question. And by the way, that's my alarm going off. If you hear it, that says, Second. God knows I shouldn't be on a community board meeting at this point. Yeah. Okay. Second. Mimi, take it away. And then we are all going to have a really nice Thanksgiving. And we are really going to be thankful for the partnership and community of all the members, public and, and full board members that we have. And I will say my greatest thanks for all the volunteerism for New York City and to the office who we couldn't do any of this without them. So with that note, roll call, and then I'm closing like this. Good. All right. Uh, I'm going to go in alphabetical order this time. Blank. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I'm getting off. Blank abstains and happy Thanksgiving all and thanks very much. Good night. Good night. Cameron. Yes. Thank you. Cassell. Cassell abstains. I'm still confused. Okay. Thanks. Chang. Okay, that's yes. Thank you. Chapman. Chapman says yes. Thank you. Charcutian. Charcutian. Keep going. All righty. Cole. Cole says yes and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Coleman. Yes. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you. Corman. Corman, yes. Uh, everybody take a deep breath and have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Kucha? Kucha says yes. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks. Thank Curtis? You. Curtis votes uh, yes and have an enjoyable holiday. Thanks. Uh, Airman? Because the resolution is now sausage, Airman abstains and have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Flores? Flores, yes. Thank you. Uh, Flynn, yes. I think it's going to be great. Forsberg? Forsberg abstains because I'm confused beyond belief. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanks. I'll go great. to the transportation meeting next time. Awesome. We'd, we'd love to have you. Uh, Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Roman. Roman, yes. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant. Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta. Gupta, yes. Thank you. James. James of Stains. Thank you. Ju. Ju, yes. Thank you. K. K, yes. Thank you. Ketring. Ketring, yes. Thank you. Lyon. Yes. Thank you. Meltzer. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Minsley. Minsley votes yes. Thank and you. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I vote yes on that as well. Uh, more. Boy, yes. Have a good turkey day, everybody. Thank you. Robinson. Robinson, yes. And shout out to our indigenous peeps. Woo. 
Thank you. Schneck? Schneck vote yes and blessings to all. Star? Yes. Thank you. Jimmy Song? Jimmy Song, yes. Thank you. Vera Song? Uh, Vera abstained. Thank you. Townley? Townley abstains. Remember Robert Simca. Thank you. You? You votes yes. Thank you. Zelter? Zelter votes yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Amen. Meeting is adjourned at 1057. God bless every one of you. Thank you for.